All right, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Sorry for the delay. Usually we're on here on Tuesday nights, but we had a really, really bad storm come through, uh, took out the internet and power and stuff. And so uh, we weren't able to come on on Tuesday night, but I did want to get Aileen on here because I'd already had her scheduled and I, I don't like to cancel on people. And so uh, I reached out and asked her if she'd be good enough to come back on, you know, sometime this week and, and we ended up deciding on a night. So thank you so much uh, for coming on uh, you and Mr. Piggy there. Yeah. Well, you get two for the price of one when you get me. <laughs> right. But, so uh, but thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming on tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for inviting us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glad to have you guys. Um, so real quick, just, just because we were talking about it before we went live, um, I was I was asking how how Piggy Piddles come about how how his name is Piggy. Can you right. tell all of our viewers how how he is how he got his name? Okay, when I started my channel, uh, I went welcome to my kitchen. Piggy is my happy guinea pig, and since I'm cooking, happy guinea pig, he eats <laughs> what I cook, so he's my guinea pig. Whether it be experimental, whatever, any. Uh, a friend of ours, avid fisherman, asked where, uh, where Piggy was one night in a live stream that we were in. And um, from there, Piggy was born. And then for his channel name, um, I don't know how many people remember Brian from Wonder Arts and Adventures. He passed away a couple years ago. Uh, he encouraged Piggy to do a channel. Nanny and, Cam! And from uh, that encouragement and then me telling Piggy, you know, I'd take care of his editing and posting videos and everything, which he is doing now. You know, he's taking that over for me. I'm, well, I'm learning. And uh, anyway, um, we talked to another friend of ours on that is a YouTube creator, and he told Piggy, you know, he said, well, you know, keep it something simple and uh, captivating. And we come up with Piggy's Piddles. And simply because Piggy Piddles and a lot of different things. And it's like I was telling you, it may be woodworking, it may be crochet, and he, he does. I have a lot of pot holders and stuff from where he's crocheted. Um, he does uh, just ride alongs, just sitting and talking, Bible study, um, DIYs, whatever. You know, it, it, he does a lot of different things. And if you see me looking over to the, my left, it's simply because it might be y'all's right. I'm looking at the big screen instead of the little screen over here. So I can actually see what's going on. But yeah, he, and that's how Piggy was born, how Piggy's Piddles came about. And well, it came up with Happy Guinea Pig. I, I, I won't say what. The happy part came from because people might misunderstand <laughs> but uh she likes to experiment in the kitchen guinea pigs used to be what scientists experimented on right she likes to experiment with food and i'm pretty happy about it so i'm gonna have to <laughs> pig. there you go absolutely beverly, beverly mommy i'm having to look at my phone so i can read comments y'all so i apologize i no you're you're good you're good I, I would be a happy guinea pig too if I had to, if I got to eat food all the time, you know, trying different food out. Heck, I am a happy guinea pig when my wife cooks something different. Uh, I, you're, the collaboration I did with you, um, he he was the happiest guinea pig because he loves that carrot cake. Oh, and yeah. he, <laughs> he, he, it'd been what two years since I'd made that almost. Yep. I'd made it once. Um, for a friend of mine, she the girl I got to school with, she'd asked me, Birdie! Hi, Tish! Pooch! Hi, Pooch! Uh, she had asked me to do a, a, a carrot cake recipe because she loves carrot cakes and didn't have a good recipe. So I made that recipe about two years ago. Uh, oh. And then Piggy loved it then. And then when it's talking about, you know, Heavenly Heart baked the, the best thing you've ever baked. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's definitely the best thing I've ever baked. If anything I've ever made was that carrot cake. So thank you for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're, well, you're, no, thank you guys for joining in on that and, uh, and and coming up with that because I would have, carrot cake was not even on my radar until you guys had done that. So, yeah. And I like carrot cake. And it's hard to find a good carrot cake. Oh, that one. I, I don't remember where I got the recipe. I've had that recipe for close to 30 years. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's how long I've had it. Uh, most of my recipes I have had between 25 to 30 something years, except for the ones in my cookbooks that I make. I, I come up with those myself. 
Uh, but yeah, most recipes that I have in my cookbooks that I have here that I have written down, they are all at least 20 years old minimum. Uh, and that one carrot cake recipe, I know I've had it for a good 30 years because I, I remember making it years ago for my mom, made it one time. If you ever try it, it will ruin you from any other kind. And what's different about my carrot cake is that I put the pineapple in it. I put the crushed pineapple in it. And that, that's right. standard for that recipe, from, like I said, from 30 years ago. And um, it makes all the difference in the world in a carrot cake. It makes it moist. It I bet it makes it more moist. Yeah. It's the, yeah. It's the pineapple. And I have had so many people tell me, you know, after having tried it, it's like, I cannot believe I'd never tried the pineapple in it before. But it, it makes a difference. Uh, that was that was a very good twist on her. Yeah, I'm all about the twist. I've got a first year I was on YouTube. I did uh, my Thanksgiving with a twist, and mm -hmm. every every dish I made for Thanksgiving had a twist in something different. And that's cool. It, that, to me, that's what it's all about. You mm -hmm. experiment. You have fun. Cooking should not be a chore. It should be something you have fun with something that you enjoy and you know yep. you don't have to follow a set thing of rules i mean unless you're baking because you, that's the science right there but you can still right. experiment with it and i love to do it too i get to eat <laughs> yeah you know, and i even have him experimenting <laughs> with me he, he cooks he don't cook a lot but he, he you know he'll help me out so i might come up with an idea or two every once in a while yeah so it it, it it should not be a chore. Everybody should enjoy cooking. If you don't enjoy cooking, That's then right. you know you're then there's something wrong that you're not having fun with it, that you're not liking what you're doing. And I, right. I'm just all yeah. But I I and I 100 agree with that because I can remember as a kid, you know, my dad he worked for Slumberjay, which is a oil well driller, and mm -hmm. um and he he was hardly ever home. Uh, and my mom, she worked for FEMA, so she was hardly ever home. And so, um, you know, when I'd come home, it either was go over to my mom Ryan's and eat, which was right next door, which we did do, or come home and 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 fiddle around and with the cookbooks, right? So yep. we might go over and eat. And I was, you know, I remember being 12, 13 years old, you know, 12, between 12 and 14. And I'd grab dad's cookbooks out and I'd just start flipping through there, you know, and that's where I learned fractions and stuff because I was getting the measuring cups out and like, okay, well, this is what it says in the book. And here's the measuring cup that matches that. Right. And I, and I'd start baking. And the first thing I baked was a, uh, a, uh, some sort of a bunt cake. I can't remember if it was like a, an applesauce cake or, or what, but anyhow, I baked that and took it over to Mama Ryan's and, and, uh, she cut a piece of it off. She said, now, uh, you tell your dad that, that that's awful good. And I said, uh, I baked that. She said, Oh, you did not. You did not. I said, yeah, dad's gone. He ain't nowhere around. He, he's been gone for a week right now. I said, I did that. She said, Oh my goodness. You know And I mean? So I've always enjoyed that. You know, I've always enjoyed, you know, playing around with it and, and baking and cooking and, and stuff. And it's, it's not a chore, you know, it, it is what you make out of it. You know, if, yeah. if, if you, if you make it a chore, that's what it'll be. But if you make it fun, it'll be a lot of fun. Hi, Jamie. I saw Jamie's Country Living's in here. When we first got together, I had a little bit of bread, peanut butter, and jelly, and a whole stock of robin. <laughs> that, that's what was here in the house. And we went to the store. Well, he had a few other things, too, because he asked me, he said, where did you find that at in there to cook? Because she, she made a meal with what I had in there, and I'm like, where did you get that from? That's weird. It was in our, <laughs> the things that were on the shelf. It was some canned goods and stuff, and I just made a meal out of it. But I laughed at the first time I took him grocery shopping with me. I went in and I had a grocery cart full. And this was back before prices skyrocketed. We've been together. We married nine years to 18 of this month. So we've been together almost 11, 11 and a half years. And, uh, but we were grocery shopping. And I spent 80 something dollars on groceries and had a buggy full of groceries. And he's like, you got all that for $80? I'm like, yeah. Well, we went to places I wasn't used to. I was used to going to <clears throat> Food Line, Bilo, Walmart. Walmart. He, he go to the expensive grocery stores. I go to Aldi, save a lot. You know, right. places like that. I, I go where I can save a buck. And uh, 
But right. he, he was shocked at what we got for $80. And, and you can shop on a budget. You know, you can do that if 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 you have the 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 I don't know how you put it the mindset. I guess you know what I mean. Because a lot of us have been kind of brainwashed into thinking that there's only Kroger's, only Food Line, only Walmart, only Sam's, etc. And we forget about the Aldi's and you know Save a Lot and all these other little stores the IGAs and stuff like that, that you can save money at that have just as good of product and sometimes better, but we don't have it in our mind yet. We, well, you know, my wife for a long time, it was, well, I'm going to go get the grocery shopping done and all the stuff for the house because Walmart's a one-stop shop. Right. Right. And, and, and because it's convenient and, uh, and, if you can break away from that mindset of the conveniency of, of everything being at one store and just go to multiple stores, you'll save money. Yeah. We actually make a circuit when we go grocery shopping. Now um, we take his aunt to adult daycare in the mornings and pick her up in the afternoon. So when we go grocery shopping, we'll take her drop her off. And that puts us hitting one of the grocery stores at about eight o'clock. Well, this, one of the grocery, two of the grocery stores open at eight that we go to and the other one opens at nine. So that allows me to hit the two that open at eight and then they're all three right there in a row together. So we hit the one, then go the other, and then we turn around, come back and hit the third one. And then it's just right, you know, right home. Now there might be, I might have to stop at food line later on to pick up one or two things that I cannot get at these other stores. And but sometimes we have to hit a Publix because you just can't find it anywhere else. Yeah, and I right. do not shop. You know, I, I'm not a Walmart shopper. I don't have anything against people that shop at Walmart. I just do not shop at Walmart. So I'll hit Publix, Food Line. Well, Kroger. some people ain't got no choice but to go to Walmart because that's the yeah. only game in town. Yeah, but right. I've been shopping this way for, oh my gosh, I want to say well over 20 years. Um, Nanny Cam, she yeah. taught me that lesson real well that yeah. first trip. But uh, yeah, I, my mom and I moved. We, I was born and raised in Alabama, and when I was 17, my mom and I moved to Kentucky. That's where my grandfather lived, her dad, and we moved there so that she could get reconnected with him. He left. He and my grandmother separated and divorced when my mom was two, and she had not seen him. Um, so my mom was like um, in her 30s when she met her dad again, and so we moved to Kentucky and lived there for 15 years. Uh, he passed away a couple of years before we, a few years before we moved back to Alabama. And so we moved back to Alabama in 2002. And that was when I started shopping. Budget shopping is what I call it. I shop at different stores. Now, when I lived in Kentucky, I shopped at where I could go. They had Piggly Wiggly and they had a Kroger right. and a Walmart. And I hit Kroger and Piggly Wiggly most of the time. But once we moved back to Alabama, I started hitting the UGOs, the, uh, save a lot and things like that so that I can budget shop because I, I, you know, I don't hesitate to tell people what we went through. Um, my mom was on SSI and I got laid off from my job that I had uh, after moving back to Alabama and couldn't find another job and couldn't figure out why. And it comes to find out my mom had to have 24 hour day care. Her health required her to have somebody with her 24 hours a day. And I could not afford to pay somebody to sit with her while I worked right? and just have money to live on. So we lived off of her little SSI check every month plus food stamps. Well, you right. get $2 a month food stamps. You have to make it stretch. And yes, that's what do. I did. You know, I, I went where I had to go and, you know, we got out maybe that, that was my only day of the month. I got out that I did not, that I was not with my mother was when I went grocery shopping. Every right. day. Damn. Uh, Elaine would swap every one of the ones she goes to to have a Piggly Wiggly around. Oh, man, I love Piggly Wiggly. I do. Um, but, yeah, you know, so I had to learn to do that. And then when I got with Piggy, we that that's how I shopped. I've been shopping that way for well over you know, 24 years now almost. and Or about 22 years, excuse me. And so I, I do that. And I save the money I can save. And that, that's how we – and even now – I spend between two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars a month on groceries at the prices they are today. The most I right. spend is three hundred dollars a month on groceries, and 
that's people kind of get shocked when they see that because, you know, I do cook some meals that, you know, good cuts of meat and things like that. But we don't eat like that all the time. He'll tell you, you know, a lot of times we'll eat a sandwich when I'm not doing a video because we just don't. We don't eat a lot to begin with. Yeah. So, right. it, you know, a sandwich, maybe two is all it takes to fill us up. Yeah, I, I'll eat one. He might right. eat two. Yeah, because she's went through a cancer battle. I went through neck surgery, disabled nerve damage, you know, so I don't do much, so I don't need a lot. So that's right. So um, where are you all at now? Are y'all, are you back down? Are you in Alabama now? I am next door. I'm in Georgia. I'm in Georgia. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought cool. I was in the Twilight Zone. Well, you are. You stay in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so that that's cool because um you know north the northern part of Georgia is uh is is pretty good for growing, isn't it? It is, but I don't get to have a garden like I would like. Um there's circumstances around us that keep we, we have hindrances. Yeah. One of these days we you know, we we keep saying and praying and hoping that God's gonna put us in a place that's gonna be ours. Where we live at right now, the, this place is not ours. Um, and so there's circumstances why we can't actually grow. And now it, they're not stopping us. It's, 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 it, it, it's a family thing that ain't too good family. And yeah, yeah, you know, she's tried putting stuff out there. And, and just to give you an example, you know, we, we tried one year. She had some maters out there. And, and she checked them things every day for the mater worms and stuff. One evening, yeah, you know, she checked them. Nothing there. Next day. About midday, we went out there to check them. There was a full-grown mater worm on one of the plants. Yeah. Now, it didn't get there on its own, not overnight. Yeah, right. uh, somebody else had tomatoes down the way. And so uh, we, 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 we know that there's some things, you know, yeah, tomato worms can come around. But like, it's like he said, you know, I check those plants every day, two and three times a day, making sure. I babied my tomato plants because I wanted tomatoes. And, right. Um, the only thing I've ever really had that grew very well out there was my green, green beans. beans. Oh, and he learned the difference between green beans and canned green beans, you know, fresh green beans, canned green beans. Right. He likes oh, fresh yeah. Beans. <laughs> he likes the fresh ones. I oh, guarantee yeah. it. There ain't nothing like a fresh one. But we learned from that we wasn't going to be able to do no kind of gardening because we was going to have a hindrance, uh, two legged version, not four legged. Yeah. Uh, All right. Helping us out in all the wrong ways with that. Yeah, so, right. so I'm kind of giving up on the gardening for the time being. I still have all my stuff out there, my planters and things. I'm not getting rid of those because when the day comes that I can do it, I'm going to have my garden. And, there you go. You know, I, now, I plan on it. I'll be right back. Okay. Are y'all up in the, our, our northwest Georgia? Is that mountainous? Not really. Uh, we're about, what, 20 minutes from Chattanooga? Where we're okay. at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it now, um, if you kind of go to the mountainous parts, it's kind of more toward the east, over toward where uh, Not For Nothing Homestead and Joe Fix It For You and Mud Mascara and I live. They live okay. in the mountains. All right. Beautiful country. They, I they live in Appalachia. Yeah. I, I yeah. definitely <laughs> wouldn't mind living over there. That's beautiful country over there. Right. Um, but uh, where we're at, like I said, we're about 20 minutes from Chattanooga. And, you know, I, I, we don't tell everybody because we live right outside of Dalton. We're in our technically Ringgold, but it's just right outside of Dalton. So we're not in Ringgold proper. Right. Uh, but we are in the country. We love it in the country. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I've lived in the city. When I lived in Kentucky, I was in the city for 15 years. I did not like it. So very much. I don't really blame you. Yeah. The, the city ain't, the city ain't for people like us. Yeah, no. Yeah. They, they can keep that place. <laughs> um, so what what got you um, into YouTube? What got you wanting to make a channel and starting that? This was um, 2021. Uh, I actually started in 2020. We were remodeling the kitchen. And Piggy talked about maybe starting to do woodworking and things. And while we were redoing the kitchen, it's just like God laid on my heart. He said, you know, you really need to do a YouTube channel. You know, you cook anyway. It's something you're already doing. All you got to do is video it and put it up. And so she ran it by me. So I ran it by him. 
I said, no brainer. Yeah. So like I said, this was in 2020 that the idea hit and I kept wanting to do it. And we were still in the process of getting everything done in the kitchen. And finally I just said, you know, that we're in going into August, September of 2021, almost a year later. And I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it. So I just went in there and I started filming a little, uh, dish i was making it was some kind of it was potatoes and eggs and it was like a ranch scramble but you know i made right. that and that was my very first video and i thought i said i'm ready to start we're going to get it done and just go with it and um, i think about a week later i put up my actual first video which was uh biscuits uh homemade buttermilk biscuits and then I did my sausage gravy to go with it, showing that, you know, I thought I had milk in there. I didn't have any milk. So I did water gravy showing you, you can, hey, you can make water gravy, you can make milk gravy, whatever. But that was yep. how it all started. It was just uh, something that was laid on my heart. And now we're going uh, two and a half years in, working on my third year. And uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. I mean, there's been a few times, don't get me wrong, that I'm like, why am I doing this? But uh, I, I truly enjoy it. And I enjoy everybody I have met. We have met some wonderful people. And some great yes. community, homesteading communities, cooking community, fishing community. Yeah. All great people. I, I have subscribers from every walk. I mean, whether it's gaming, uh, the Filipino community, fishing community, homesteading community, um, DIY, you know, who, who, whatever. I have people from all over. Storage options. Yeah. Davis. What? We follow every, you know, so many people and then um in return you know, we get followed and it, it's just it's growing and i'm not where i want to be but you know what i'm happy with where i'm at because it's a whole lot farther than where i was on the day i started you got so, that and, right i know exactly I, what you mean yeah and i grow every, every time you know i, I turn out i i gain one or two i lose one or two gain one or two lose one or two and it, it and it's like we talked about it's a game with you too it's um you know you may gain five and lose two but yep. I don't cry over it because hey, they're going to come back. It's just analytics. Oh, I told her you have to be like Triple H, time to play the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, and I'm just I'm thankful for everybody that watches my videos. Um, we go live. Well, I go live on uh, Saturday nights at seven o'clock, and I do food trivia. Everything oh, I cool. do on my trivia has to do in a way with food. And we have so much fun. I don't have a great lot of people in there on Saturday night. Sometimes I may have only five, ten people. And sometimes I may have 20 or 30. It just depends on the night. Sampy! Hey, Sampy, welcome in. And uh, so we do the trivia. I enjoy it. Everybody else seems to enjoy it. And sometimes I get through at 8.30. Sometimes I get through at 9. And then whatever's going on after that, we direct them to whoever we know that's got a live going on. And... If they want to go, everybody you know, goes over there. Yeah, they go have when, fun. When she right. started that, right before she started that, I was wanting to do the woodworking because I thought, well, I get the tools. You know, I know how to do a few things, and I can see how it's done. And I thought, well, you know, if I do that, I can maybe make us a little extra money, being out where we live off my disability. Well, she hit me with that YouTube thing, and I thought, no brainer, because. Next to nothing to start up. We work on it. it. Might take longer, but it's a whole lot cheaper starting up that and working towards it than it would be to get the tools I'd need to do the woodworking. I can do that right. sometime later if it works out. Yes, uh, Paige, you got that right. Football Country said, uh, said the best thing about Eileen is, co is uh, her cooking videos. She is doing it her way. I do. I cook my way. That's a lot of titles in my videos is my way. And then... Uh, Talking about Piggy, he said he's gonna he gonna tell you straight up, and Piggy does. He's a straight up person when it comes to talking to you about that. Okay, well, ain't no ain't no other way to be. What's going on, yeah. Jason? Thanks for stopping in, buddy. Jason C. Yeah, that's my buddy there. So, uh, yeah. And not my. Yeah. Well, Pooch is not it is. Probably one of my biggest buddies. Uh, he, he's like a brother. Yeah, Pooch can tell you about this right here. I was telling you about the rub. Pooch can tell you about yes. the rub. He's T tested that. Let, let's talk about that real quick. Tell, tell everybody okay, that, about that. Okay, the rub 
It's called Piggy Syrup, and I have a regular version, which I'll get that close to you. Maybe you can see that. And I have a salt-free version. Now, this was made to go with my barbecue sauce. I have a, bar a homemade barbecue sauce called Backbite Back that, that I make. And Piggy named it because it's uh, it'll come back and bite you. It's got a little bit of heat after you eat it. It comes back and bites you in the back of the throat a little bit. But I made the rub to go with that. It's got a lot of the same seasonings in it. And this seasoning, you can use it on any type of meat, any type of seafood, any type of vegetable, and you will never get the same taste. Because what it does is it actually brings out the natural flavors of the food. You won't actually taste the rub itself. It brings out the natural flavor yeah. of the food. Well, depending on how much of it you use, you can sprinkle it like you would salt and pepper, and that will season it and bring out the natural flavor of the food. You can use it like an actual rub on meats and put it on the grill, and you can taste the rub, but it still accentuates the flavor of the meats or vegetables that you cook. Yep. Right. And, uh, yeah, it, so I, this is what I use. I do not buy a ton of seasonings. I use salt and pepper on most things, or I use this. That's it. And like I said, you can put it on pork, and it will give you a different flavor than if you put it on chicken or beef or uh, ven venison or even fish. And Pooh said, yes, the rub is most definitely a great product on anything, and paired with backbite is most excellent. Yeah, it, it, because that's it was made to go with the backbite. I don't have any backbite sauce packaged right now. I sent out some to Pooch and Avid Fisherman and Mike's Fishing Home and a few others that um, I wanted them to try it, to tell me what they thought of it. And the one thing about my backbite sauce is it does not have any added sugars, I should say. I don't put brown sugar or honey or anything in it. I leave that to the right. person that's going to use the backbite sauce. You can make it as sweet or savory as you want. Now, I do occasionally right. add back, uh, uh, the brown sugar to it or maple syrup or honey when I'm using it simply because it does give it that added flavor. Mm. But it can be used just like it is. And if you like other flavors of rubs and stuff, it, it won't hinder this because what this will do is bring out that natural flavor of the food and then you put whatever it is you like yeah. on top of that. Yeah, this can be used in conjunction with any kind of seasoning and works great. And I made this, I think I said, I've got it down here, I made it in 2017 is when I came up with the rub. And so about 2015 is when I came up with Backbite because I had had back, my Backbite sauce that I made about two years before I started making the rub. So and can you tell us what's in the rub or do you yes. keep that a secret? It's a tiny secret. I can tell you what's in it, but not how much. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. That's fine. Garlic powder, onion powder, uh, chili powder, cumin, paprika, salt, and pepper. And in the salt free version, it's just no salt, but all the same ingredients. Okay. And that, that's, that's what's in it. I, like I said, I don't mind. I've got it listed on the back. You can say, you know, right. what's in it. That way people know what's in it. Um, and, and and the salt free is really good for your pork product because uh, pork product is going to be salted already anyway. Yeah. You, you know, you right. want to add that additional salt to the pork. So use the salt free on the pork and that way you don't have additional salt. But I will say, you know, even if you got the salt, the regular with has the salt in it, there is, I make one big batch and I will tell you, I put one ounce of salt per a big batch of the mix right and that one ounce will fill seven of these bottles okay. well the, the, the big mix will fix well, seven of these plus leave me extra for to put in my personal bottle right so it's not like you're getting a great lot of salt to begin with in this but it's enough to give it the flavor and you can tell the right. difference you know just enough to tell the difference mm -hmm. but uh you know that's the one thing i will say that you know just in that one big batch um and I do have, uh, it only has one ounce of salt for that whole big batch. Now, I do make two sizes. I have the three ounce size here. And this bottle, even though it's a three ounce bottle, it holds 2.3 ounces of product and it is filled to the top. And I will show you. I don't mind showing. Well, yeah, that we need the others. well normally they have a, uh, a seal on them. It's uh, this one for some reason, it knew it, so I have to check that one. But there is a, uh, a seal that comes with these bottles, and it makes them air, uh, 
airtight. Right. Yep. Down on. Um, I have a 32 ounce bottle that I have and uh, it will hold 16.9 ounces of product. And uh, I was going to get one. I don't know where you got them. I think they're up there on that shelf, Piggy. On this one? Yeah. They're down there near the freezer on the top of the shelf. And I have one person that buys those from me. Um, the 32 ounce bottles are, I sell them for $31 plus shipping. These I sell for $8 plus shipping. But this is the 32 ounce bottle. And that comes packed full. And when I say packed full, I mean, I put it up to underneath here. I do not skimp and have it down here. I, I fill it the full. Tap it down. She taps it down, everything. Fill it to the top. I mean, I'm one of these. If you're going to buy something from me, I want somebody to be able to get what they're paying for. Right. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that, that's how this came out. It came about to go with my barbecue sauce. And we started using it on everything. And I do mean everything. I have used it on now, popcorn, and it is great on popcorn. I've used it on watermelon. Asparagus. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, the fact that I can use it on watermelon, and it gives watermelon a good flavor, too. Because I mean, watermelon's good. Anyway, right. don't get me wrong, but, you know, it, right. it has that. But, yeah, that, that, that's how that came about. And um, I, I'm, I'm proud of this because it is a good seasoning. I don't have to have 15 different seasonings for different things. I can use one seasoning for everything, whether it be for, like I said, you know, as a rub on the meats or just as a condiment like salt and pepper. Um, and I can use it on any kind of meat, fish, seafood, poultry. You know, I, I have used it on the duck. I've used it on, yeah, venison, beef, pork, fish, um, Trying right. to think of all the different things I've cooked, shrimp, you know, it, it just everything. And then any kind of vegetable you can name, you can use it on. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, where can they find that at to buy it from? Do they have to, or do you have an Etsy store or do they got to reach out to you? I, or you can contact me via my email. And uh, which I, so I kind of thought it was funny because you had my channel name from my email, from my email because my channel is I am welcome to my kitchen. But my email is Eileen. Welcome to my kitchen. In it has an extra E in. When I was setting up my email, I could not okay. see that it had the E in in it, and I messed up, and it had that extra E in. I couldn't ever figure out what was going on. Why I wasn't getting emails, and I got to look at it, and I had the extra E in on the end. But yeah, just contact me via <laughs> my email, Eileen underscore. Welcome to my kitchen. In, kitchen in the extra E in at yahoo.com. and uh, you know, tell me how many. You want if you're interested like i said they're eight dollars a bottle plus shipping and shipping on these usually run depending on where you are in the united states anywhere from i think it's 485 up to five dollars and 15 cents that just depends because farther out west you go the more the, the more distance the more shipping yeah more shipping right. uh, people close uh, i think you being in west virginia you know i was when i shipped it there probably about four dollars and 85 cents something like that so i mean it is okay. That that's what just one of those things. But like I said, I do have these planned for you. So just send me your thank address. You, thank you. And yes, uh, ma'am. Yeah. Um, um, so I want full yeah. blown country was wanting to talk about your cookbooks, but also oh, yeah. let's talk about before we get to that though. Let's talk about your um your your backbite sauce real quick. Um, mm -hmm. you said you sell that as well, right? Yeah, I, I can't. I will sell that if anybody is interested. And again, yeah. Um, uh, it's just when I sell it, it, I actually have two different sizes on that, though only one person I know of will buy the second size. I have a regular size, which I think is like the six ounce bottle, a regular size barbecue sauce bottle. And I would be selling that one again for eight dollars plus shipping. Uh, and then I have a one gallon jug. And uh, I oh, think wow. I sold that one. The one gallon jug is sixty nine dollars because it takes a lot to make it and the shipping on that. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Materials, time, shipping. Yeah. That's yeah, right. I, that's what it was. Yeah, it was around sixty nine dollars. What I what I charged him for that. Um, the one that gets that he likes to cook. He he barbecue. Well, he smokes a lot of meats. That's avid. I, all I'm saying is avid fisherman. Now, he buys the thirty two ounce bottles. I, I got those especially for him and the one gallon jugs with the barbecue sauce. And he loves that. And uh, yeah, the barbecue sauce. Anybody interested in it, again, hit me up. I haven't got any made up right now, 
but uh, I can let you know. I, I've got to get me some bottles for that. That's the only reason I don't have any made up is because I haven't ordered any bottles. But uh, I'll be happy to send that out. And uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that I will tell you, the longer the barbecue sauce sits, the yep. hotter it gets. I have some in the refrigerator. I mean, um, yeah, the one, the what I've got in the refrigerator has been in there since June of last year. It's still good. Again, because I don't add anything that's going to cause it to go bad. Everything right. I, I put in it is shelf stable. I mean, you could leave it sitting on the shelf and it wouldn't go bad. You know, I would say use it within two months, right. two to three months. But you can leave it sitting on the shelf and it's not going to go bad. It does not have to be refrigerated because everything in it does not have to be refrigerated. That's just, you know, what the way I made right. it. So, uh, but the longer it sits, the hotter it gets. And what I've got in there right now, you can smell it when you open the jar. You can, I mean, I don't know how, how to describe it other than you can smell the heat. It's like you smell it and you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, uh, talking about. yeah so th that, that's just, and we like it. I, I like spicy foods. I like, you know. Sounds like I'm going to have to get me some of that because it sounds like it'd clear, what it, it'd clear up whatever's ailing you too. If you ain't oh, feeling if good, you aged, your sinus is right on up. Yeah, if, if, it, if it's aged, oh yeah. It'll burn it out. Yeah, it, it's it's good, and uh, I'll, I'll have to get all. The, I've got everything with the bottles. I just need to order the bottles, um, and I can make up some. And when I send you these, I'll send you a bottle of them for back bite to go with it. And that I way appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I sure do. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I sure will too. I'll I'll try it. Yeah, and um, you know that that that's so what it's about. Let's talk about your cookbooks. Really. Okay, the cookbooks. This right. is the very first, one. and the reason Paige is talking about it. It's because, let me show you, uh, if I can find, i got to put it in here, <laughs> because of the second recipe in here, or the second signature dish in here, I should say. Let me find it. Because of this right here. Can y'all see and, that? That says full-blown country. Oh, yeah. That's the made for him. There you go. So, that's why he's talking about the cookbooks. I guarantee it. But uh, but I make <laughs> signature dishes. I do one signature dish a month. Um, I do not do them without asking the channel, or whoever operates the channel, whether it you know if it's a home signature channel, I will ask the main person on the channel if I can do a recipe for them, or if it's just you know an individual person like Miss Joy Stewart, I ask her if I can do a recipe for her. Um, no one for one like Joy, though. It's kind of hard to yeah, do. Yeah, if it's somebody that cooks, it's really hard to do a, a recipe for them. But uh, not just cooks. Yeah. Cooks very well. Yeah, and this <laughs> is the second one. Um, this is the one that came out this year. The first one came out last year. Um, but I like again, I just, Yeah. And um, this one has the collaboration uh, recipes from last year that I did for the Noodle no uh, Noodle November and uh, which one were they? Okay, the bonus recipes were Wild Game November, Noodle November 2023, and this December collaborations that I did. And um, so when I do those, uh, I do the signature dishes, I do the collaborations now, and I'm putting them in the cookbook, and it all comes out. And there is a link for both cookbooks uh, in my description and also on my about uh, on my page. And you click on those links, they'll take you straight to them. Um, depending on which cookbook you buy, one of them is, uh, I can't remember the exact prices on them, but I know one is like $30 and the other is the 32 This is the wire bound. It's called a wire O-bound because of the wire. And this is the most expensive one that I sell. Um, I get it through Create My Cookbook. Anybody that wants to create a cookbook, I highly recommend that website. They let you take as long as you want and they, Excuse me, help you through the process if you need it. I also and have when a, they get an order, they pop one out. Yeah, it does not ship internationally, but I do have an e-cookbook that if anybody international wants to buy it, they can buy the e-cookbook and print it off themselves. Uh, and it is like $10 That's for the cool. e-cookbook. Uh, so, you know, it, it's something that I've done. I'm working on my third one, like I said. And the signature dishes, um, I started out with uh, Backwoods Mindset, Full Blown Country, uh, Brazos Valley Soaps. Um, I'm trying to, I can't remember everybody that I've done. I can, How about go to your contents? 
I don't have a content so I took that out. I do have a list of channels though, just the channels that I did recipes for. And this is in the first cookbook. Um, let's see, uh, Backwoods Mindset, Full Blown Country, Russell Spelly Soaps, Joy Stewart, Scott Swift, uh, Mike's Fishing Home, Southern Sown and Grown, Julie Starting Over. Um, she doesn't really do much on her channel anymore right now, but uh, I still got her in there. Avid Fisherman is in here. Rita's Roost is in here. Uh, Mr. Duggar Fishing. LG Bass and Michelle at It's All Mine. Uh, those were the first 13 I did. And then in this one, like I said, I've got my collaborations. And the ones I did on this are, um, I did, I don't know, like I said, I don't, I'm just naming these channels. So that way I can give you an idea of who they are. And also, if y'all want to check them out, you can also check out the channels. Uh, Johnny right. Small. Enjoying the journey, cancer as a lifestyle. Christine, geeky yo. Hi, Christine. Uh, uh, let's see. No judgment here with Tish Ross. Uh, mm. Up in the air and outdoors. The Bingley Farmhouse. All train coffee and camping, which is now um, out of gum. I think is what they what his out of gum called. Uh, all that fluff and stuff. She's out of Australia. She has a feel good channel. Great lady, love her dearly. Uh -huh. Real and virtual outdoors. That's Troy. He does a uh, Troy, my boy. Yeah, he, he has a gaming channel mostly, but he does uh, fishing and other things uh, as well as the gaming. He he's a great person. Love him. Love his. He, he can't he, actually get out there, so he does it through gaming. Yeah, he's funny as all get out. Yeah, yeah. He's in, he's in a wheelchair, and I love him dearly. He he, but you know, putting it out there just so people understand you know, why we say he's a gamer and all that. You know, I did. Uh, Gillum Farms, which that was the one I did for Gillum Farms. That was the uh, pot roast, um, or beef roast, I should say. And then I did one for Christine at Christine and Mrs. Gillum Farms and Derek Fowler, 1973. And then uh, Sandy Toes, which is also from Australia. And uh, these, all of these channels have been gracious enough to allow me to do these signature dishes for them. And then I started off this year. I have done one... Uh, You've only done three so far. I've done three three videos so far, and I have already, my mind has gone blank. I can't remember all of them that I've done because I've done the signature dishes. I have done the collaborations from the beginning of the year. But I, I have, uh, I know, five recipes already started in the cookbook for this year, and I totally enjoy it. I love it because I'm creating my own recipes. Every one of the recipes in here, yes, they are basic things, but they have my twist on them how I fix them, how I would fix them for the person that I named them for. I, I'm in the background making commentary and getting her different things that she needs and cleaning the dishes and all that so that she can concentrate on licking the plate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he asked questions that, you know, I don't, I'm one of these, uh, even though I try to make my dishes and I've had a lot of people ask, well, what about the recipe? If you watch the video, whether I have anything on the screen or not, when I, if you watch the video, <laughs> you will know the exact amount of the ingredient, what the ingredients are, and how to prepare the ingredients. Because I do step by step on my on my videos. I try but to do that. What I do is I know a lot of people are afraid to ask questions because they'll feel like their question is dumb and they don't want to appear stupid. Right. So I'll ask the stupid questions. Just to show people, you know, hey, I'll ask them for you. Yeah, that way you can see, you know, because uh, one, of my, one of my PIs in boot camp, uh, no, I'm having an idea. Anyway, uh, taught me something. He had told us the only dumb question is the one that was never asked. That's what I started to say. The only stupid question. So was I'll, I will ask her the dumb questions. To get clarification on different things so that it further teaches folks who are wanting to learn mm -hmm. that's right jamie and uh everything so that, and i can make it silly at the same time yeah you know so uh, make it fun yeah and and that, that's what i'm that's right uh, about me i i loved to cook even when i was young i first thing i ever cooked i was five years old i cooked a fr I fried a piece of bologna i got up one morning i was hungry my mom was asleep my grandmother was asleep and I was hungry, so I pulled a chair up to the stove, and I got some bologna, and I cooked some bologna. 
And my aunt had come by to visit. My mom, like I said, my mom and grandmother were still asleep. And this was, a, it had been a Saturday morning because it was wash day. And my aunt had brought her laundry there to wash. And uh, I remember getting in trouble because I cooked myself a piece of bologna because I was hungry. And she, my aunt went off on my mom and my grandmother because you let her cook, you let her do it. Yeah. And I, I remember, I'll never forget that that was the very first thing I ever cooked was a piece of bologna. And after that, I learned to love to cook. Now, my grandmother passed away when I was seven, so I didn't learn a lot from her. I learned from watching her on how things should taste. And there's still things to this day that I wished I could cook like her. And uh, she getting her. Yeah. But uh, I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I love to bake. I truly love to bake. Um, I was in fourth grade, won a blue ribbon on cornbread. So that just in, oh, wow. made me more enthused about cooking. And um, right. took food production in high school, learned how to cook for a large crowd of people, large group of people. And forever, it, it took me forever to learn how to cook for two. And Piggy will tell you, even now, we have leftovers enough for two or three days because I don't know how to just cook for two people anymore. I, I cook for three. Well, three actually, you do. Because yeah. what she fixes. I'm guilty of it. If we had normal appetites, you know, we, we'd devour it yeah. that evening. But our appetites are not regular appetites. So it'll last us two or three days. Oh, yeah. Which I right. had that. Look, so, uh, I got a rest. I got a recipe coming out Monday. I think it's it's it, yeah. That's my cooking one on one. I do cooking basics one on one. I do one of those a month as well. I thought that came out today. Yeah, that was today. The cooking basics one on one came out today. So I got to do a video for Monday. Um, it, and it was rice. And it's like I, I said on my video. I said you know it should be the simplest thing to know how to cook, which is rice. But it can be the hardest a lot of thing. Can't cook it. Yeah. Rice is so easy to burn. If you do not yep. know what you have, rice is it, 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 the simplest thing, it's the hardest thing to cook. So I showed how I cook it my way and explained why I did it, you know, as far as the two to one, because that's what it says on the bag on the bag. Two two parts water one, or two parts liquid to one part uh, rice. But um, I fixed the pot roast to go with that. I made a roast with gravy to go with the rice. And that lasted oh, yeah. us, what, two, three, four meals. And uh, he, he loved it. And <laughs> all of stuff, yeah, I didn't even video the pot roast. I just made it. But what I did with my pot roast, I took my roast, and it was a good about two-pound roast. Uh, I put salt on one side of it. But before that, I put it in my, my crock pot. I put uh, a stir of water over it, and it liked about – yeah, maybe an ant being over the top of the roast. And I took and I salted that thing down. And you would think it was too much salt. But taking account, I didn't salt both sides. I just salted the top side, salted it good. Right. And then I sprinkled some of Piggy's the rub on it. Mm -hmm. And then I let it cook on low for about 10 hours. Because I let it cook while I was sleeping a little bit before. Tender. It was so fall apart tender. Took the juice off of it, strained it, got all the fatty things off of it, and made my gravy and put it back on top of the meat and stirred it up and then served that over that rice. And it was just so good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I I would love to be able to do videos on everything I cook, but I then I would be redundant because I'm cooking a lot of the same things sometimes. Like you know, my tailgate time, I did the uh, sloppy joe sliders. It's what I told about. We eat a lot of sloppy joes. I mean, it's mm -hmm. quick, it's simple. Right. You know, homemade sloppy joes. I don't have to rely on the can, so I, I make my own sloppy joes. And so, if I could, if I made a video every time I cook, y'all be seeing a lot of sloppy joe videos. <laughs> I'm just saying. Chris Dane, Johnny, <laughs> he's big enough to be like a small army of his own. <laughs> Chris Dane's husband, Johnny, he's like six foot three. Over. Uh, right, he, he probably knows Johnny. Johnny he Johnny. probably does cattle rancher. Yeah, I don't know who knows who. I've, so, well, I, I've only seen him in videos. I've not, I don't really know him, but I've we seen haven't him. met him in person Doesn't... yet. <laughs> Notice I said yet. Yeah, we are we we plan on meeting him someday. Well, Chris Tang, I've seen your cooking videos. Um, <laughs> I, I I know I used to be skinny. <laughs> 
I, Chris thinks good cooks. That, that's why I said, you know, with so many wonderful cooks, it will be so hard to cook for everybody. And right. when you know someone's a wonderful cook and you try to fix a dish for them, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to cook? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How do, yeah. what's the what's the mindset you go into when you go to prepare something for somebody when you when you go to do this? What do you, like what's the what's the thought process? What what makes you end up cooking what you cook for them? Gut feeling mostly. I watch them, and you know you you watch, you listen, you learn a little bit, but mostly she, she's a pretty good judge of character and personality. It's good. It is, it is mostly it is gut feeling. And uh, if I'm not feeling it at that point, I will swap around because I've got a little list right now. I, I still have a few more to go, but uh, I'm, I may put one off and do it a couple months later and then pull somebody else forward. And do she she kind of fills it out like a good woodworker would on a piece of wood when he's sanding yeah. it down just right. Yeah. I, I just, uh, and then, right. you know, it's what feels right because, you know, I, I've told, I think I told the story before. Um, I did the video for uh, the put for page uh, for the signature dish, and I had originally uh, chosen to do a stuffed baked fish for him, but it didn't feel right. I had the recipe there, and it was just like it j I just wasn't feeling it. And then I decided to go with the chicken dish. Well, when I did the ch dish for Tish, his wife. Bam, the baked fish, the stuffed baked fish. That was her dish. So it was a case of I wasn't wrong on the dish, but it was for the wrong member of the family. First dish. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it was with Johnny. Johnny, you know, you know he, he's a cattle farmer or cattle rancher, whatever you want to call it. He, he, you know, raises cattle. And I knew I had to do something with beef for him simply because he, he does that. And I wanted to do a beef roast. I, I just wanted to do a beef roast and, and I did it. And Christine and Johnny both told me that I had nailed it. And that, that's what I've gotten from most everybody that I've done the dishes for is that I've nailed them. Uh, I've only ever really done one drink in my recipes. And I did that for Mike's fishing home. And it was an adult beverage that I did. I, I made a, uh, I call it a local Rita. I used to, uh, I don't know. Mike likes the four, four loco. The four locos. I don't know if anybody knows what they are, but it is an adult beverage. Woo! And uh, I made a, uh, like a margarita, but it was using the, local, the four loco. So I called it a loco rita. And instead of using salt or something around the top of the glass, I put some lime juice on it and piggy syrup. I dipped that glass with the there lime juice go. in the piggy rub and it just made that drink but i made the drink to go in conjunction with the dish that i made him which it was, it was like a, a watermelon syrup. flavor adult yeah. beverage you used half the can yeah uh with watermelon i used frozen watermelon ice and the locarita to make that and um that's the only drink i've made so far to go with any of the dishes and as strong as those drinks are you couldn't really taste yeah. it in the drink yeah and you know so it's kind of like I take a little bit of the person's personality of what I see in them and what I see in their videos and things that I've heard them talk about, things they like, don't like, whatever, and have made the dishes from that. And, and Mike was a hard one to do for too because he's not a professional chef, but he cooks professionally. Yeah, he, he, he worked in a bar and grill type situation cooking and they had a restaurant and, and he still does it. He's cooked for years and so you know anybody that cooks and especially cooks professionally it's really hard to cook for and he, he was blown away by what she did for him yeah and speaking of that i have a few slots left open for my year and it might be toward the end of the year but may i do a signature dish for your channel what is it you broke up a little bit i said i i have a couple of few slots left it'll be toward the end of the year but may i do a signature dish for your channel Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd be honored. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, I will add that to my list. So I know I, I think I've got, uh, it might be toward August before I get it out because I've got a few more to do. Uh, I, I've got a few spots left to fill. 
but uh, I, I try to get them ahead of time. And like I said, I do not do these arbitrarily. I don't just pick a channel and say, all right, I'm doing this for them. I make sure that I have permission because this is the person's channel. This is their name that I'm putting out there. And I do not want yes, to go against anybody on that because I would not want anybody using my channel name for something, you know, without my permission. And that, well, that's just how I am. You know, I, I try to show respect because I expect respect from others. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. You know, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think, think that would be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. And you know, I, I love the fact and something I know about you, you do, you grow the giant pumpkins and yep. you grow some huge pumpkins <laughs> and I've seen some other huge uh, vegetables and things that you grow, but I, I'm amazed when I see the pumpkins and things like that, that people can grow because I, when I had my garden, you know, if I could get a squash that was like three inches long, I was like, oh, wow, you know, I've got a squash. She'd be happy. But right. I, I'm happy, but, you know, to, to see, because I know it takes time and effort, it, you know, it, it to grow something like that. Because my grandmother every year had a garden. And when I say a garden, I'm talking, you know, good 20, 30 foot wide by 40 something foot long. She had a big garden. And this uh, one, I've almost got the entire acre up so yeah, yeah I, i'm i'm pretty serious about it yeah i'm a lot yeah i'm feeding a lot of people so yeah and when you do that you know it and th that's what we've decided to do is now when i fix like uh cakes and muffins and cookies and things like that um if we can't eat them all um uh, we take them to the workers at the daycare where his aunt goes and I share because I made a cinnamon roll cheesecake. We couldn't eat it all. So I took that to the workers there. I took the rest of the carrot cake to the workers there. Let's just say she's got some ladies down there that love her. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I have had, um, I had one person ask me to make them some cookies and I made them and sent them to them. You know, they did pay me to make them. And I've got someone else. Uh, that has asked me to make them cookies and I've got them in the freezer getting ready to ship them out. And again, you know, they do pay me to make them and they pay me basically for the shipping and for the ingredients and what little bit of time, because um, I don't want to gouge people on things because I get a video out of it when I make stuff. And, and eventually I mean, that will pay off. Yeah. So, right. uh, but you know, I, I, the cookies and stuff, I, I don't mind doing that. I do, again, have the piece, the rub that I sell, I, and my cookbooks are for sale. Um, and if anybody has questions on the cookbooks and can't find the link, you, know, you can always ask me, and I'll send you the link. That's not a problem. Um, but, yeah, it, I, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the community. And I, I'm not talking just one community. I'm talking about the whole YouTube community because, like I said, we have friends from – all over the world. Right. And I love it. I truly do. Um, I would love to be able to go to some of the meetups. Uh, unfortunately, right now, that's not in the works for us. Now, we will be going to like a mini meetup Sunday where we'll be meeting. We've already met uh, Joe and Ginger from Not For Nothing Homestead and Joe Casey. Joe Fisher for you. But we will be meeting Jerry from Butler Family Farms um, and uh, Web's Web's Web. 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 Yeah, Web's Web. Uh, and then I, we will be meeting Maggie or Meg, Megan. Megan's uh, Fearless, Fearless Adventures, which is uh, Ginger's daughter. A lot of people call her Maggie Moo. I call her Seth Oompa Loompa. Yeah, we'll be meeting them all Sunday when we go meet up at uh, uh, Biggins. Biggins. I, my, my mind went blank. Biggins Barbecue, and uh, you know. For that, we have fun. We've met uh, several other YouTube channels. We've met uh, Beth Cornett and uh, Neil, um, which is Treasure Hunter Neil. Um, trying to think. I know we've, Beth Cornett, his wife. Yeah, we've, we've met Beth, his wife. Uh, we've met uh, Mud Mascara. Meet Tiffany. Swinger, y'all. This is Swinger. She's my next to the oldest kitty cat. We've got seven cats. <laughs> Our oldest oh, kitty cat, 10. Uh, we were there when this one was born. Her mama passed away a couple of years ago. Um, it was right in the middle of the uh, 
pandemic thing that we went through. We couldn't right. get an appointment to have her mommy fixed. So we wound up with two letters. Yeah. First letter had three. It was her and her two brothers. And her middle brother is passed away. Uh, we still have her other brother. And then uh, the second letter had six. We lost one within three days. Just couldn't survive. And then we lost um, two more. One got hit by a car. And then one um, just it was, her, away, it was her time. She had gotten electrocuted when she was a few months old. and uh, We were surprised was, she lived as long as she did. Yeah, and she lived almost two years after that. But this is our first baby. and um, We call her Swinger because she came out swinging, literally. <laughs> yeah. It, the the umbilical funny. was still attached. and it was. Uh, she was dangling. Yeah. Oh, tidbit got up, didn't know what was going on, and she started turning around to try to get to it and there swing <laughs> it looked like the swings at the uh amusement, amusement park. park going around and she was upside down going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had That's the funny. helper and I was laughing I couldn't stop it but, but she she turns four on the eleventh of this month and her other siblings uh let's see her and her brother Gray turn four uh and our other four uh, well, it's no three. We've got three girl, three left out of the six now. Uh, we have Fancy, Heartfoot, and Darla left. They will turn four on April the 20th, July the 29th, which is the day after my birthday. And then we have uh, our oldest kitty who was astray and uh, basically a rescue for us because somebody had dropped her. And she brought home another stray rescue for us. Uh, about a year ago, his name is Tank, and he looks like a tank. And uh, so we wound up <laughs> with extra kitties. At one time, we had eleven; we're down to seven, and we have a puppy dog. We've got a Charlie dog somewhere around here. Charlie He's like dog. laying down. Yeah, he is like a Chorky, uh, Chihuahua, Yorkie uh, mix. Post. He, he He's more is. like a Scotty in a Yorkie. Yeah, he's like a. I think he's a mixture of Scotty, uh, Chihuahua, and Yorkie. I'll mix because he definitely got the personality of a Scotty. He, yeah. He's snobby, right? And uh, <laughs> he, got, he looks like you can check out Piggy's uh, video from yesterday. I think it no, it would be for Sunday. One, it'd, it'd be for Sunday in case, yeah, we don't make it back for my live. Yeah, it's his just in case video. And uh, if we do make it back for the live, it'll be his Tuesday video. But that's his thumbnail. is Nanny Cam, not as much as you would think, because every one of these critters, except for Charlie, they like to go outside, spend most of their time outside, and they hunt. Yeah. And they're really good. Yeah, We buy normally around a 44-pound bag of cat food a month, and Charlie will go through about a four- to five-pound bag of dog food. But that's because he gets his supplemented with uh, meats and stuff. When I cook, I cook a little extra for him. Um like chicken or sausage or bacon, whatever. You know, I give him a little extra, and I put the drippings from the grease and stuff a lot of times on his uh, kibble to make him eat it. Yeah, because he would not eat kibble for the longest, and uh, a lot of that had to do with when he was a puppy. We got him from my aunt and uncle. They got him from someone else, and you know, I, I, he he has issues because he got yeah. passed around. But uh, his last stop before us uh, that particular uncle he's not good with the animals and i done seen three good uh dogs come out in a bad way because of him because he don't understand animals and uh all of that so i i, I told him that if they couldn't handle him we'd take him. yeah and we we got him but there were other things going on you know i not trying to be gross or anything, but there, there was an issue with uh, roaches and things like that, and he had to fight the roaches for his food. So he did not like... Kill. He wouldn't eat dog food for the longest. For the longest, because he had that having to fight issue with them. Now he eats kibble, fine. We've got him eating it, but I still supplement it with you know other things. But yeah, the kitty cats go through about 44 pounds a month, sometimes less, depending on how often they get outside, because they do hunt. We do not now, have a problem. Now that it's getting warmer and things are coming out, they, they like to be out yeah. more. Yeah, we do not have a problem with rats, mice, 
moles, voles, squirrels, rabbits, anything like that. There's we'd have no problems with that. Uh, and hello and welcome into uh, denial. I, I was going to say Daniel, but I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it's it. But Daniel or denial? Daniel, I'm not sure. If I butchered that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize if we butchered. It. Yeah. Um. The um, question I had for you, uh, Piggy, is you were you're you was a Marine. Is that what your hat says? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I like that hat. That's a good looking hat. Thank you. So, thank you for your service. Uh, what did uh, what'd you do when you were in there? I was. If you don't mind, was you like a, What what is that? Field radio operator. Life oh, okay, cool. Three seconds. Yeah, communications guy. The guy's got the radio on his pack. Gets shot at. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I get I get a whole second and a half longer than the officer next to me. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. They. Uh, they. Uh, they. They don't make it very long in the field. That's for sure. And uh, I never liked being around them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to be as far away from the radio guy as I could get. Uh, um, I hear you. So, but, uh, but yeah, um, we, uh, I'll tell you a funny story about the Marines. They about killed me one time. Uh -oh. So um, we, was, we was over in Iraq and uh, we were on top of a, a OP on top of a building. We were doing some observation and um, everybody in the whole area was supposed to know that we was up there, you know, watching out. And, and pretty much we was doing overwatch and, and just watching for guys that were, you know, trying to lay bombs and stuff, make, you know, uh, roadside bombs and everything. And uh, we was also watching the, the Bank of the Euphrates because. Um, all right. Hang on a minute. I'm going to have to give me one second. Hey, uh, one of y'all. Is is uh Tony running um Tony's one of my mods. Is he running a thing right now? One of the um live streams right now. If he ain't, I kind of need Tony. Let me see here. And I'm gonna write him real quick. But um, anyways, um, let me see. I'll get my wife to make. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, nanny cam pretty good, Todd. Yeah, I'm getting ready to get her to be one. I gotta get my wife to do it because I don't know how to do it. Um, all my mods are gone right now, but um. Anyhow, we was over there, and um, and uh, they were all supposed to know that we were, we were watching the bank of Euphrates. There was this guy; he was on a bulldozer. He was a marine. He was on a, on a bulldozer. He was working the bank, trying to do something on the bank. I don't know, remember exactly what he was doing, but anyhow, we were we were pulling OP on there, and um, ever like I said, everybody's supposed to know we was up there. So they, we're up there and we're watching, and here comes a Humvee full of Marines. They come through, they slow way down when they get to where we're at. And we got the IR light on top of our MVGs, right? So we flash them like, hey, friendlies, man, you know. They go on up the road, turn around, come back, slow way down again. We flash them again, you know, like, hey, we're still here. We're all good, man. You ain't been but a minute. They go back down, they come back, and on the third time, they open fire. All right? Oh, no. And Oh, yeah. I mean, just, you know, 50 cows going, everything's going, you know. And that was one time I didn't care to be around the radio. <laughs> and so, um, right. So, uh, right. Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, so on the radio, and, um, and Sergeant Ford telling him, said, uh, he's talking to the talk, and he's like, hey, Marines came through and and they're they're you know we flashed them and they're lighting us up you know lighting the position up they're giving us away pretty much as well so they're like well you know pop a red star cluster and they should stop and go on so we you know red star cluster one of the big flares pop it they just keep on hammering away and he's like that didn't work 
what else? You know, and they're like, well, you know, maybe, maybe do this, you know? So they pop a, a green one, right. And they're still hammering away. And uh, we're waiting on the talk to tell us, you know, like what, what next to do, you know, send somebody out there to them or something. Cause we're getting tired of this. Right. And we're running out of the wall. If you want the truth of it, that 50 cows wearing the top of this wall. Out, and man, it's getting kind of narrow to, to lay behind. So, right. uh, yeah. So we got tired of it. And Sergeant Ford said, Oh, the heck with this. He just reaches over and starts shooting back. Oh, man, they quit. Cease fire, cease fire, cease. No kidding. We can cease fire like 10 minutes ago, people. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the time the Marines almost killed me. So, oh, it was a uh, it was bad. Good time, they killed me a couple of times. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I, I, never, tell you, I, never, I never saw combat. All I saw was field exercises. <clears throat> I came close right. to dying a few times out there, so don't feel bad. I can believe it. I can believe it. I can somebody, believe it. Hey, somebody, somebody, uh, you know got when you're in boot camp. Go ahead. Somebody got their grids wrong. Go ahead, tank, and uh, tank round hit about 100 feet away from my jeep as me and a staff sergeant was going by. Staff sergeant crapped his pants pretty near and he's i'm just steady going he's like do you not do you not hear that feel that and, and all this i said what it tank round about it us i said well we still going i guess we all right he just looked at me like <laughs> oh my but anyway you were going to say uh, yeah, so, um, you remember, uh, I don't know how it was when you went in boot camp, but whenever, uh, whenever I was in boot camp, we, uh, they had to climb up over this wall for, for a night shooting, right? And they were firing live 50 cal rounds and 240 Bravo rounds over our heads. And they'd have simulators of, of mortar rounds going off around us, right? And right. you had to low crawl under barbed wire and stuff. Okay. But you had to first climb up over this, this big tall wall you know well for me and you it was tall but for some people it wasn't that tall but anyhow um they told us said now listen whatever you do don't don't get up there and stand up because those are live rounds flying over your head and all i remember is i'm up there i come up over the wall and i'm down and i'm crawling 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 and i and i look up like this you know and I see tracer rounds flying over, and I'm like, okay, that's the, that's the live stuff, man, for real. You know, they wasn't lying. And about that time, I I, I hear everything just stop. I mean, just silent as just silent as I'll get out. I thought, what in the world's going on? And I turn around and look, and there's a guy standing straight up, not five feet from me. I mean, just just I mean, he's about six foot tall, standing straight up, and. <laughs> One of them drill sergeants come running across a thing and hit him like Bobby Boucher and Waterboy, plowed him over and uh, took him down, man. You lie, we told you don't stand up. You know, and, oh, I mean, he was giving him the business, man. But yeah, that was that was a bad time, you know, because I mean, they tell you don't stand up, man. That, that goofball standing straight up, man. Live rounds flying everywhere. I don't know if he froze up or what, man, but yeah, I. It, a lot of that stuff happens in boot camp. People don't, I'm about people don't realize you they got him out. Yeah. I'm about guarantee I, no, he, 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 out. he graduated. I know lower. That's hard to believe. Yeah. No, well, they, yeah, they, they told us they told us it wasn't live rounds, but we better not stick a butt up. Right. Yeah, they they uh they they uh they told us they were like, Yeah, them, them live rounds, don't get up, you know. Uh, um the only thing they said was fake was the was the mortar rounds. They said those were just simulators, you know. But they 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 would tell you don't climb over near them. And there was people who who had climbed over near them. They'd blow them off of them like it would it would you know hit them. I guess they weren't paying no mind to what. I mean, I guess when some of these guys when I got to boot camp, they they literally believed that um, you know like some of the stuff that 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 were was told right. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, so, like, if a drill sergeant said, drag your head through the mud, 
you know, they just they just lay their head down, and just drag it through the mud. You know, what I mean, they just took everything literal, and uh, you know, not he didn't mean that. He meant low crawl, get your head down in the mud, low crawl, look where you're going, not drag it down in the mud and not look where you're doing. You know, and so I think a lot of the times, whenever they would get over near them simulators, that's that that's because they were taking them literal, or just dragging their head through the mud and weren't looking where they were going. Um, there was a lot of things like that happened. You know, that that the drill sergeants, you know, took them. They, they took the drill sergeants quite literal about stuff and, and, uh, and the drill sergeant would have to break it down in Barney terms is what they would call it, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and try to, try to explain to them, you know, what's, uh, Oh yeah. They had to go ABC one, two, three. Get him kitchen. He frees up. I think Brian Looks did. like he froze up. Yeah. Yeah. Tony at Killer Kitchen told us both hi. I like saw that. Hi. That's why I tell him hi. Yeah. Do him a howdy. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a pair of nanny Tam said you made her jump a while ago when you were. I did. Yeah. You said something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, yeah. I'm catching up with Chap now. He did freeze up. Yes, he did. He froze up. Oh, man. Somebody get the torch out. Well, y'all him out. out. While he's froze up, uh, I'll promote my uh -oh. channel. Uh -oh. promote, promote my live stream. I go live tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central. Uh, I do food trivia. Um, tomorrow night's just going to be general food trivia. Sometimes I specialize in certain things. I might do a cookie trivia. I might do a cake trivia or spices or whatever. But um, tomorrow night, it's going to be general food trivia. I usually do about 20 questions. Most of them are multiple choice. Everybody's welcome to come in. And uh, we have fun. We chat and just talk. Uh, we do the trivia. And then uh, Piggy goes live on Sundays normally uh, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time on his channel, which is Piggy's Piddles. Uh, this Sunday, we don't know if we're going to make it for his live or not, but we will try. Uh, it, yeah, because we got that thing down south. That's about an hour away. Yeah. So uh, we 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 like to have fun with it, and we try to hit as many lives as uh, as we can. Uh, Piggy actually gets into more lives than I do, and I listen in the background while I'm doing other things. Right. Ryan is having internet issues. Okay. Well, we'll talk as, for as long as it, until he either comes back or he shuts it up. Ryan, be your choice. He's rebooting right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, I like the fact that Tony's in here and can relay what's going on because I have right. no idea. I, have to, I probably need to give Ryan a way to contact me on that. And, uh, but yeah, we. We like to uh, go in, and y'all, um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows, but if you don't, I know Kettle Kitchen, he has uh, game nights and trivia nights as well on his live streams. Uh -oh. Hey, there he is. Hey, somebody sawed him out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, the, the the house internet went out. So oh, no. I had, to, I, thankfully, the phone internet did not go out. So we're good on that. So I had I had to do some quick thinking. I was like, all right, what to do, what to do, what to do. Um, but yeah, that uh, that um, that that boot camp uh, was 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 wild for me. I mean, uh, I, I went to military school, and you know, I learned a lot there and, and had a lot of fun there. Um, so whenever I got to boot camp, it wasn't nearly a, a shock to me as it was to some of those guys. You know, some of them it was you know a, a quite quite the shock you know they, they thought they had it down you know because they was the uh the recruiter's little pet at home but uh you know once once we got once we got to where we were going you know boot camp it wasn't quite the same and so they uh they found they, out they, that they, recruiter knows how to lie yeah knows how to lie real well too <laughs> oh yeah so uh but yeah um yeah it was it was uh quite different for uh for a lot of them but for me it was just another day and uh 
so I, I I picked it up quite quickly, and I understood that they weren't, you know, they weren't uh, being literal about stuff. You know, they were just telling you things to do. They weren't being literal all the time. All right, cool. Got the internet up. Let me try this out real quick. See if I can all pull right. it up on here, and then I'll turn the phone Big on. Rudy! <laughs> all right. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Boom. All right. So we got it back to working now. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun in the army and, uh, I don't, I don't think I'd ever, ever trade that for anything. I mean, uh, so, some of the things wasn't so fun, but a lot of it was and I had a good time. So, right. And, and I'm sure you feel the same way. You probably met a lot of interesting people while you were in the military. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of inter- a lot of interesting people. I've got, I've actually thought about sitting down and writing a book about it, but now that I'm a Christian and I, you know, I go to church and things, some of the some of the more comical, funny things, I don't know that I could tell it. You know what I mean? Because, um. I, I I don't know. I, I would feel like some of it would be too too far out there. You know what I mean? For for you know, you know how it is in the military. There's a lot of lot of weird, crazy things that happen. You know, and and it, it is it's funny. It is funny, but it's nothing you're going to stand up in church and talk about. You know what I mean? So Hope you ain't been there, just wouldn't understand. It, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I had this one. I'm not gonna tell everything, but I had this one uh, E7. Uh, he uh, he went. Him and um, Sergeant Benedict had both been to uh, uh, Mogadishu. All right, and um, anyhow, uh, his name was Sergeant Asenzi, and uh, he he was he was about as far out in left field as you could get. And everybody else was in the dugout, and he thought they were still playing ball. All right, uh, I mean he, that's how bad it was, and um, and so uh, um, he uh, he would he would stand back here in the back of the formation with the rest of these E sevens, and and um, he would just stand back there and look at the trees in the morning time at the birds up in the trees. And everybody else would get called to attention and he'd still be back there looking at the trees like this, you know, I mean, just in his own little world. And, and one day our, our new first sergeant come in and he said, uh, Sergeant Asenzi. He said, yeah. He said, what, what's going on top? He said, are you going to, are you going to join us this morning? I'm right here. He said, I can't get no closer. He said, we're, we're at attention. Oh, oh, okay, okay. He locks it up, you know, goes to attention. We don't even get called to parade rest yet, and he's back there still looking at the birds. <laughs> he done went to at ease, you know. And, um, I mean, just little things like that. Like, uh, when I we was over in Korea, whenever I met him, and uh, every month over in Korea, they would sound the alarm at, at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and they would do drills to act like North Korea was coming down to attack you. And um, we'd have to get in our full mop gear, you know, our, our NBC suits with our masks and our, you know, cold charcoal clothing and all that stuff and boots and gloves and everything. We'd have to go to the weapons room, get our weapons out and everything. And so anyhow, one morning you got top, you got Captain Ball and our, uh, our RE7, the platoon sergeant, setting up there on the top of the top where the company's at, they just sitting up there watching everybody come file through to get their weapon. And I'm behind Sergeant Asenzi, and Sergeant Asenzi has his ma- gas mask laid over to his side. You know, he's carrying it in his pouch. You don't have it on. He's got his beret on. He's got a BDU top on, his NBC pants on, his bottoms on, right, and his NBC boots. And he's walking up through there, just strolling up. And um, Sergeant Battle hollers out and says, Sergeant Asenzi, Where's all your gear at? What gear, Sergeant? He said, your mask and your NBC top and everything. He said, I don't need that today. They ain't attacking us today. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he just, some some wild stuff, you know. And so, um, 
He goes in there to the weapons room. He says, you know, hollers out his, his, the number of his weapon and, and stuff. And that boy wouldn't give it to him. He said, I, I was told not to give it to you. He said, now, what do you mean to tell me you ain't going to give it to me? They can be down here today to attack, and I don't have my weapon. Now, he literally just told these guys outside they ain't coming for him today. And he gets in the weapons room. He said, they oh, they be here any moment. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you what, he was one of the most brilliant people I'd ever seen. I mean, for all his little hiccups and stuff, um, he would have three to four guys zeroed and sighted in and, and, and out of the foxhole. Brand new guys that just got to the unit. He'd have them sighted in, zeroed, and, and out before a, the other NCOs even had one done. Wow. So, I mean, he knew his stuff. Um, he just wasn't up here. And I've got I've got a load of stories on that guy that, that I mean, just would blow your mind. And um, blew my mind at the age of 18. I'm sitting there going, holy cow, he's doing this in front of everybody? Like, this is some – like it was some funny stuff. If you didn't see it, I mean, you would you would thought it was just made up comedy. You know, I mean, it, it, you you know, if you didn't really know who he was, you would have thought it was comedy. But he was just. And the day that we got uh, our orders to go to to ship out from Korea to Iraq, we was the only unit to ever deploy from a hardship deployment to another hardship deployment. When we got our orders in, the next day he was nowhere to be found, and we never seen him again. Uh. Yeah, so we we think that uh, that they they did a forced uh, a forced uh, retirement on him. Yeah. Well, so, he, you know, those kind of quirks, he could be a danger to the unit. Right, just, right. Uh, real quick, uh, hello, my friend to Jeanette, Kathy, and Delbert. I saw y'all coming in. But I understand where you're coming from because I met a few that were crazy. Oh, I've yep. heard some stories from Piggy, believe me. I've heard some stories. Not quite in that way, but they were crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there there's some of them out there. They were just wild. I mean, just buck wild and, and out there. And and then him, he was he was certifiable, I believe. You know what I mean? But uh well, but, in the Marine Corps, it's kind of a, a, a standard that you got to be at least a little bit crazy just to join the Marines. Right. <laughs> So, you know, but there were some that went above and beyond. Right. <laughs> I, I understand that. I understand that completely. Yeah. Some some of them, some of them just, uh, they didn't need to be all that, did they? Right. But, you know, I think one of the things why people ain't been there but wouldn't understand is because you sign that dotted line, you know, especially if you have anything to do with, combat unit or surrounding units surround the combat unit. Um, I might die today. Yep. You know, so I might as well have some fun while I'm here. That, 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 that's, that's why we signed that dotted line. We're warriors. We're going to do what others won't or can't do so that protects our way of life. Not that it's doing too much good right now, but, right. you know, but that's why we, that's why a lot of us went, I won't say everybody went in for those reasons, but that's why a lot of us went in was, you know, we had family and friends that we wanted protected. So we made that sacrifice to go so that they could live their lives. Right. Because somebody was out there looking out for them, doing what that's they right. could. And, uh, and a warrior just looks at it like, well, if I die, I die. You know, that's what I came here for was to put my life on the line so that those I love wouldn't have to. That's right. You know, so that can mess with your mind a little bit. You might not be thinking about it because it may be way back here in the back somewhere. Yep. Uh, you know that today could be the day. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yep. You know, I, I was in military school when 9-11 happened. And I can remember the uh, one of my favorite cadres. He was a Marine. And um, I always had on my on my profile when I would sign in on my reading class, it the the password was Navy SEAL one. And um, when he found that out, he's he 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 got me a picture of this. Now I didn't know it at the time, but it was fake. But it was a picture of a Navy SEAL jumping out of a Chinook and a great white jumping up and eating him, right? And it was fake though. 
Well, see, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL real bad up and until I seen that picture. And when I seen that dag blame shark jumping out of that water and eating this supposed Navy SEAL, I said, yeah, maybe Navy SEAL just ain't for me. You know, <laughs> so I said, maybe we just stick to the ground and pound. You know, we, we do some rip school, ranger school, you know, so we, we ain't going to get ate by no shark. I mean, we, we ain't doing that, <laughs> you know. And, um, and so, you know, I, 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 I quickly changed my mind after that, but you know, me and him was very, very competitive, um, in everything we would do last man up runs. You know, we would run the whole, the, the uh, whole battalion and we would do last man up runs and we'd race every stinking time. It was my turn straight all the way up to the front of the daggone battalion. Um, we do pull up competition between me and him. I mean, he was my height. You know, and 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 I looked at him as as like an older brother, right? And everything to me, I made it a game to beat him, right? And uh, I think that's one reason why I made it through through uh, military school so easily is because I looked at everything as a game with him. You know what I mean? I I didn't look at it as a challenge in any other way but him. You know, and mm-hmm. and I think that's why it, it was easy for me to go through it. But I can remember. Uh, he was in the uh, in the room, and and uh, they all had all the cadre had had walkie talkies, and you, know, we, you heard them say, "You know, turn on the news, the morning news," and there was the the first building on fire, you know, and and then the next plane comes in and hits it, and I'm sitting there going, "What?" And the, I was 16, and I'm thinking, "What's going on here?" Right, and um, at at the at the military base we were on uh, up in Kingwood, West Virginia. Um, that's where a lot of special forces goes and, uh, and, and does a lot of, uh, training and stuff and Marines come up there and do training. And so the, by the next day, our barracks was locked down, shut up tighter than the daggone, uh, than, than you know, anywhere else on post. And we weren't allowed to go out. You know, we, we didn't even get out to go do PT or anything. Um, they brought meals to us and stuff, you know, for the first few days. And, and we, we even had to put our wall walkers in front of the windows. Um, and we heard these helicopters flying over and, we, you know, they were trying to debate whether to send us home for a few days or, you know, and then that would mess up with the next cycle and stuff like that. So they let us stay. But for, for a few days, it was kind of off. And, um, and all I can remember is thinking, what's going on out there? outside of these windows and so we would try to push them back a little bit and we'd look out there and and every one of the other barracks that were empty are now full of either marines or special forces oh, and no. um yeah and i'm sitting there thinking man this is this is some crazy stuff <laughs> um and so um you know it got us all into this mindset that we all wanted to go and, and join right because now we're getting to see what the military does you know military school is one thing but whatever you get to watch what the military gets to come in and do and then train and gear up to go. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it sets a fire under your rear end. And so, um, you know, these, uh, these guys uh, that were older than me, the, the 17 and 18 year olds, they got to go to MEPS. Uh, they got to go take an ASVAB and go to MEPS, you know, and, and, uh, and sign up. And I was 16 and I couldn't go. And, uh, and that, that made me mad. You know, I was like, I want to go. Why can't I go? I mean, I'm just as good as that guy. He's 17. He gets to go. And I'm, you know, so um, anyways, graduated in December, turned uh, 17 in, uh, in January. And then uh, it wasn't long after that, I ended up going and signing up and, and, and going into the army. Um, but uh, you know, watching that, you know, get, it, I, I got mad, you know, I got mad that somebody would do that. You know, that somebody would 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 come on our soil and 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 you know, hurt all of us. We well, when that happened in September, in November, we went down to do the um, the tour of, of, of Washington, D.C. Uh, for a great big old field trip for one of the last field trips we've done. And, you know, go see the Smithsonian and all that stuff down there and, you know, and really get to tour it for like four days. We drove by the Pentagon and there's that big hole in the Pentagon where that one plane had hit it. You know, and and every you know, we all got to see what what had happened, right? And uh, right. and stuff. So yeah, I mean, um, you know, I went in because because you know I I wanted to de- defend it. You know, I I thought that this was horrible that somebody would do this and and everything. And so uh, yeah, I wanted to go and, and defend defend this country. You know, and and uh, and make a difference. You know, and so you're right. You know, we 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 sign on that dotted line, and um, 
you know, we, 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 we want to make a difference and stuff. And we're not sitting there thinking about, well, this could be our last day. It's in the back of our mind that it could be, like you said, but we're not thinking about it. And the reason we're not thinking about it is because we're goofing off and doing all kinds of silliness. Right. Um, that's why, that's why a lot of, a lot of military humor, people don't get it. You know, they don't get the, there, there's a very dark side to, to military humor. You know, we, we, it's our way of coping with the fact that we could go off this post any moment or even be right here on the post and, and, and die, you know, you, you just don't know. Um, and so we got, you know, dark humor and, and we, we got a, a funny way of looking at things and stuff. And, but um, yeah, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything because they, they made me who I am. And uh, I, I, right. I, like, I like, I liked it a lot. Right. Nanny Cam brings up a good thing. Dependents, wives, uh, spouses, you know, they make sacrifices too. Absolutely. You know, because they have to do without that loved one and run life on the home front. And that can be hard. That's right. Well, I mean, even whenever we get back home, they got to put up with us when we're all different than what we were when we left. We're all jacked up. Yeah, all jacked up, you know. Uh, my wife still wakes me up from nightmares, you know, and uh, it took her a long time to learn how to wake me up. You know, I mean, she couldn't just go grab me and wake me up. You know, she woke up to something in her face one too many times, you know, because I, I I was I slept with one under the pillow. You know, I mean, I was like that over there and I was like it for a long time when I come back. You know, right. she'd move it away from the pillow, put it, over, put it over in the in the night drawer or something and be right back under the pillow the next night, you know. And she finally had to threaten to to not stay the night anymore, <laughs> or or uh, or the or it had to go over the nightstand. So uh, I I started slowly changing. I didn't put it under the pillow. I just put it underneath the mattress right there, so I could just reach around and have it by the mattress, then slowly over into the nightstand. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they have to make they have to make sacrifices a lot. You know, while you're gone, when you come back, you know, it's a it's a different ball game. Even me being non-combat, I was ready. And right. It, it took me a while to adjust. Oh, I and, guarantee it. Yeah. You know, but, you know, even today, I still see things through the lens of strategy as a warrior because I can see everything going on I, and I see the strategy. Right. You know, and and a lot of people don't understand that as well. Uh, good night, Nanny Tam. Night. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see you later, Miss Nanny Tam. But uh, but yeah, even as a non-combat, I I was I had I had to adjust. Right. I had, had a place I worked at. There was this boy had an uncle that had served in Nam, and they liked doing things to cause him to flashback. And so, the boy found out that I'd been in the Marines, and he kept doing things. I worked in a carpet mill and one day I heard what sounded just like a grenade going off behind me, turn around. And what it was, it was a 12 foot core for a roll of carpet that he had stood up and let hit the concrete. Right. Yeah. I felt that white flush just go through me. Right. I just knew I, I, I'm dead. Right. And I turned around and the boy was just laughing and he told me about the uncle and I like that. And I told him, I said, Y'all going to do that one too many times one day and he's going to kill you. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, another night, all these machines going, you can't hear anything. Yep. And he'd come up behind me when I was sitting at my desk. I was a supervisor and I was doing uh, weight checks and stuff. And he had spooked me coming up behind me in a split second. I was standing up facing him with my fist that far from his nose. That's how long it took me to stop myself from wrecking that boy. Right. And that night I told my department heads all about it. And I told him, I said, you either do something about him. I said, because it was close tonight. I said, I cannot guarantee I can stop myself the next time. Yeah, if it come that close, I cannot make a guarantee that I can stop the next time. So y'all either move him or he's going to wind up hurt. Right. 
I never saw that boy again until I found out he was working in another department. That, and, there's uh, a there's a lot of that goes on though. You know, they, yeah. they, if they can find out, you know, uh, when I worked at uh, Phillips, uh, it was I was a machinist up there. Well, you know, machinist is a dangerous job. Yeah, you know, working with them lathes and and those mills and stuff. And I'd be sitting there working, and they they see me concentrate and they'd take a wrench and smack the back of the machine and have me jump like a cat on a hot tin roof. They just thought that was just the funniest thing ever. And, um, and I tell them y'all need to quit this stuff, man. I don't, I don't like it. You know, it's uh it, 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 it does something in the side of me. I was like, and y'all got to quit this. And they just, the more you tell them to quit, the more they just keep right on going. And uh, yeah. So uh, one, one night we got outside after after they had done it, it was after work, and, and um, that one old boy that I always thought it was so funny, he didn't think it was too funny after I got done with him. <laughs> uh, I done had I done had my feel of it, so right. and uh, and I wrecked that Joker, and uh, yeah, he 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 came back the next day, and I, I, I'm so sorry. You should have been sorry about six months ago. Yeah, you know? and ain't none of this stuff would happen. Yeah, but. Uh, it, well, they, they, don't, they, they don't realize that when they do that, that's just the same as pulling the pin on a grenade and letting go. Right. Absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah. when, when that, when, you know, when you're not expecting that and you see it, they don't understand fight and flight. Yeah. You know, we don't have no flight. We have fight. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the switch gets turned on and there it is. When you can, when you get me to, to that point, you know, and you done flip my switch, and, and you don't and, get me with the first shot, I'm coming for you, right? And and, and then there it is. They're always oh, just a joke. Well, no, it's, it's not, it might be funny to you, it might be funny to all of them, and y'all might be able to do it to one another, and that's fine. But but leave me alone, leave me out of it, you know? Yeah, because the bottom line is the reason we don't want to be bothered like that is because we don't want to wind up hurting one of them, right? Exactly, exactly. That's the whole right. thing. Yep, yeah, so, we're there. We're there to fight an enemy, not the citizenry. Right. You know, and you know, so they don't realize the restraint it takes to be able to stop yourself. You know, and I, I totally understand you wrecking that boy. Yeah, they, you know, they thought they think it. it's all funny. So, but they wasn't laughing after that. <clears throat> I, I, Matt, is that, like you say, it's all fun and games until something happens. Well, it was just a joke. Yeah. Uh, you've been told not to do this for so for so long, but it's still just a joke. And it's well, it's not my fault they reacted that way. Right. Uh, yeah. When you've been told yeah. not to do something, it is your fault. You know, we all make choices in life. If you're gonna make a choice to be stupid, you're gonna have to suffer the the consequences for being stupid. Yeah. If you want to poke a bear, you better hope it is in a very strong cage. Right. Yeah. And it never gets loose. All I did that night is because it was right before lunchtime when he'd done that. And uh, and I can remember stopping the machine. I hit the e-stop button on it, the emergency stop on it. And I looked back at him. I leaned across it and I looked back at him. And I said, that's the last time. And I just show he, oh, ho, 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 just barely laughing, you know. And and walking down the walking down the shop, just barely laughing, pointing and belly laughing. And I said, the last time and so whenever he come out that out of the shop at night to go home to work i said remember what you did earlier oh that was just a joke not a joke and that not was, it. that was the bad. last thing yep that was the last thing i said and i i whooped that feller and <laughs> and then i proceeded to get in my truck and i drove home and i was going to take any consequences that came the next day and there wasn't no consequences coming the next day right. so yeah but i was yeah, done he, with it he found out you could just as easily have killed him i mean uh, yeah i mean it just you know just leave me alone you know that's all i asked right, so, right. and uh yeah they, they 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 slacked off for a while and then there was a new guy come in and uh and he he picked up you know, and and so uh, I finally just got to where I I done talked enough, done done had enough. I said, "All right, boys, y'all can have it." 
I'm I'm going home. <laughs> I'm done. I I can't do this because I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up really really hurting somebody. So right. I went I went home. That's what I did. So I wasn't going wasn't going to take it no more. I like I just like to be at peace, man. You know, I I seen enough over in Iraq. I just want to be at peace. I don't want to fight, argue. I don't want to do anything. I want to have a good time, laugh, and and cut up, but not at the expense of of uh, tormenting somebody. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so, I, I'm I'm one of these. I don't like practical jokes. I'm not a prankster. I don't like. I mean, you know, joking with somebody is one thing. If you've got a camaraderie with them and y'all can joke, right? If it's somebody that may be just a coworker that's not friends with you whatever or even somebody out there that just likes to pull practice I, I don't do it even with with friends yeah because we don't. a lot of folks that are non-military they're going to always try to do that one up and they know no yeah. limits you know yep. and yeah. i know that tip for tap eventually yeah. somebody's going to get hurt yeah. yep and that's exactly right. but can't take it yeah right. and so you know, and and i and i can tell you I have taken a beating yeah. to keep from hurting somebody. Right. You know, uh, they thought they really done something, but you know, they just don't realize. Yeah. You know? So I, I took a whooping to keep right. from hurting somebody. Yeah. You know, and sometimes cause, you got to do that. Yeah. I, I just don't think I can live with it if I actually hurt somebody because number one, when I had my strength, I had a strength you wouldn't believe. Number two, I had been in the Marines. I, I, I know a few moves that, you know, it's like I to explain to one boy, I was not trained how to fight. I was trained how to kill. Yep. You know, and yes. if I ever let it loose, I'd be going to prison for murder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because of, because of their stupidity. And, uh, and on top of that, I can't stand the thought of hurting somebody. Right. You know, uh, now I was been in and been in combat. You know, I'd have done what I had to do. I'd have dealt with the mental stuff later. But, you know, when you're home where you're supposed to be at peace, you know, and then you got some joker that does not understand what they're dealing with. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to take the whooping. You know, I've always said this since I've gotten out. I think it should be mandatory that every, 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 at least every male be made to serve at least two years in the military. I agree. I, I say female too. I'm sorry. Don't you know? Right. 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 My perspective. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I'm just talking about for, you know, cause, cause uh, I'm a male and I, you know, I, I don't want to speak for, for the females, but at least the males, you know, and, and I think females would be good, but too, because let's face it, it teaches them one to be responsible. It, it teaches them, you know, to, to do the right thing, gives them integrity, you know, um, and, uh, and it makes them mature, you know, it makes, it forces them to grow up, you know, so they're not over here goofing off in college at 18 to 24, you know, they're, they go in the military and, and they're forced to grow up. You know, they're forced to, to look at the reality of things. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and after that, you get a very well-rounded for the most part. Now there are some veterans who are, and you know, just as well as I do, who are bad veterans, you know, oh, yeah. but for the most part, a veteran, you get a very well-rounded, respectable person. You know, and it's because of because of of the of boot camp, because of having to go through everything. They learn to be a team player, you know, and um, and all the good things that you learn from being in the military, uh, you know. And I really think that if we did that, if we enforced that, um, our generations would we wouldn't have the problems we have right now. Well, yeah, you'd we, have a better class of people working too, because they all learn a trade of some sort. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, one of the things one of the things they'll learn too is they'll learn to be a good leader and also know how to be a good follower. That's right. You know, it's it's like here with her channel, you know, I know how to lead or follow. 
Well, she's the brains behind the operation, so I let her lead. I follow and help where I can, so I get in where I fit in. There you go. You know, uh, so I know how to do both. She knows how to lead and get things done. She she don't she ain't that good at following. <laughs> I have had to lead since I was sixteen years old. When my right. stepdad passed away at six, when I was sixteen, um, I took over paying the bills, uh, taking care of my mom. My mom was not good with money. I mean, she just was not good at paying bills, balancing balancing the checkbook or anything. So when it comes to paying bills and, and taking care of things, buying groceries, I did all that from the time I was 16. And so I had to become an adult as a teenager. Right. And learn a lot then. And don't get me wrong. I love my mom. My mom to me was the best thing in the world. She was my best friend as an adult. But when I was a kid, you know, before I, my teenage years like that, you know, she flat out told me, you know, I'm your mom. I ain't your friend. Yep. And she didn't hesitate to, uh, where you she, like say, she didn't spare the rod to spoil the child. Right. You know, so uh, I, I learned from that. But, um, yeah, I mean, to me, everybody, when when you hit 18, you should mandatory, male, female, whatever, should, should serve at least two years in, in one branch of the military. I don't care which branch it is. Yep. It's and, good training for life as well yeah. as anything. I, right. I tell you, people a lot more respect than what they got nowadays. That's for sure. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, I didn't serve in the military. I'll be the first to say I did not. My only experience with the military, I was in ROTC for four years or well, three and a half years in high school. I was stupid and quit high school my senior year, six months before I was supposed to graduate. Um, did go back and get my high school diploma later on and went to business college. But, uh, you know, I served, I, I was in our junior ROTC. I went to uh, summer camp at Fort McClellan one year. We went, you know, and I learned different things while I was there. And I have gained a respect for the Army, for the Marines, Navy, Air Force. I have two uncles that were in the Air Force. I had great uncles that served in the Navy. One served, I think, for, I want to say, a good 30 years in the Navy. Maybe two of them did. One was air traffic controller, come out of the Navy and became a civilian air traffic controller. Um, the other one, when he retired from the Navy, he retired full out. Um, the two uncles that were in the Air Force, one served 18, retired out for a full 20, uh, went to work for the post office. The other one, uh, he left the Air Force early because he was in one of the uh, missile silos up in Montana. And it activated while he was at the bottom of the silo. Oh, wow. And he had a nervous breakdown. And I, I mean, I can understand. I wouldn't want to be in there with it going off either, but it malfunctioned and right. th they got it taken care of. But he and the other two guys that were in there with him, they the, all three of them had nervous breakdowns. And I can understand that. But I've had cousins that served in the Army. Um, of course, Piggy served in the Marines. You know, so I have family that has served. So I respect the military. I, I respect what it stands for. I respect the fact that the military is our last defense. It is our first and last defense against all enemies. Right. And it, it breaks my heart. And, and not only does it break my heart, it makes me mad when I see people disrespecting our military. I remember as a child, I didn't know what Vietnam was. I didn't know what all of this was because I was like maybe seven, eight years old. Didn't really understand all that. Right. But I remember as a child, and taking count, I'll be 55 in July. So this was back in the 70s, right after Vietnam, had people coming back. This, my dad knew, my stepdad knew some people, and we went to visit them. And it was around the 4th of July. And I didn't know anything. You know, I, I'm not, I'm one of these, I didn't really deal with fireworks or anything, but this guy was sitting there, and you hear fireworks going off in the distance. And he froze. And then he ran inside. I didn't know what was going on. Right. And after we got home, my mom and dad sat me down and explained to me that he had been home from Vietnam and he had PTSD. Well, they said he was shell shocked. 
I mean, right. back then, you know, shell Yep. And said um, the fireworks caused him to have a flashback. And it took me a minute. And I asked, you know, what that meant. And I was told, you know, they explained it to me that, you know, he had seen some serious mm -hmm. conflict. And it had affected him to the point that, you know, when he hears uh, large mm -hmm. noises like that, everything, it can cause him to go back in time to that when he was in right. war. His mind goes back to that time. That's where he thinks he's at. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure you understand that oh, yeah. more than I do. And, but as a child, you know, I was learning about that. And I was like, you know, well, why don't they help him? And at that time, you know, it was hard for Vietnam vets to get any kind of respect, much less right. help. Yep. And, you know, when that was explained to me in that everybody looked down on the Vietnam vets, I'm like, but why? Because they were sent there. It's not their fault they were sent there. Right. And even as a child, I, I understood that concept. And and so that that has ingrained in me from that point on. You know, you respect your military because these people do things that you can't even dream of doing that you can't even dream of what they would have to do to protect us right and so when i say well, people when you sign that dotted line you essentially indenture yourself to the government and you become their property that's and right. you have to do what they tell you to do yeah but yep. that's what i'm saying you know you know that's why it makes me mad when i hear people disrespecting our military because Whatever the government decides to do, whatever the higher ups decide to do, it is not the soldiers, the sailors, the Marines, you know, the airmen. It is not their fault that they are being ordered to do these things. Right. That, that's what they're being ordered to do. So, and, and that's what they signed on to do was take the orders and do their job. And so that's what they're doing. And so that that's why I say it, it makes me mad when people disrespect the military. And to me, I, I just, you know, sometimes you just want to shake them. I, I, you really do. You just yep. want to shake. But um, I, I, that's one thing I will always do is stand for, for our military. And I will always support our military no matter what, because that, that is uh, that, that's just something you can't. I, I think we have the greatest military in the world because we have an all volunteer military right now. And it, it is just the, the men and women who, who serve the draft and numb it's always been voluntary yeah it is just you know like i say it it is a i i have the utmost respect for every man and woman who signs that dotted line and states that i am going to do this i'm going to serve and protect i'm going to uh do this for my family i'm doing it for my country you know and, and i'm going to sacrifice my life whatever that may mean right for me Yep. So that, that, that's just how I feel. And I mean, I know my opinion may not be much, but uh, I got to go visit the wood chips. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy said she was in the Sea Cadets as a teen. And, yeah, you know, that, that's to me, you know, you, you learn and you, you do things. And that's why I said, you know, I, I don't have that military experience. I know what Piggy's been through because there's been times Piggy has talked to me. And like I said, he was peacetime. Right. But still, it's a case of, you know, he he has his stories of things that they went through, even training. And some of them are hilarious. Some of them make you cry. Yep. And it's just like, you know, listening to you and then listening to uh, Empty Homestead and Jason, on uh, Sergeant, uh, I think Sergeant Talks. Uh, they, they come on Tuesday nights as well, I think. And, um, but, you know, that, they talk about the military and things that they encountered and did in there. And it, it makes me sit back and think and just realize, you know, we, we have such a wonderful country. We have wonderful people in this country. And um, we might not all agree on everything, and we might not all believe the same way. But core basic facts is if we can support our, our troops, if we can just say, you know, we love our country and, and want to do what's best for each other. Now, I'm not saying you have to do anything, but we don't all have to believe the same to be to be, to be able to do those things. That's right. And you know, oh, whatever it is. <laughs> but you know, I, 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 I've been called many things in my life, and but you know, for, I, I'm just gonna play it to you. I, I, these are the things I claim myself to be. I am a conservative Christian. I am a happily married woman. I am 
a homemaker, a cook, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. You know, th those are titles I will take. And I will treat you the way I want to be treated in life. And I will give back what I get. That's right. You know, you treat me with respect, I treat you with respect. I, I like this. You treat me like a decent human being, I'll do the same. If you're not willing to do that, I'm just going to avoid you and keep you away from my life. Yeah, that's what I've like, got a lot of people in my life because I do not like drama. I don't like getting into the drama. Yep, me too. And to me, that's the best thing to do is just, you know, walk away, keep, you know, cut people out. But, um, you know, you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. But when you come at me and, um, go at me with a lot of BS, then uh, you might get what, you know, I, I try to be a good person and most people get kind of, I, I get a weird eyed look at some things because uh, the first time Piggy ever saw me get mad, I, I got a weird eyed look from him because he had never seen me mad and I try not to ever get mad at anybody, but uh, you know, I, I know she had it in her. I just <laughs> say it is believe it. Yeah. Right. I said y'all being in the military, y'all know what it is. Sometimes you can lose your temper. Sometimes you have to, but yeah, you can treat people oh, like you can be treated. More, more often than not, I, I can lose my temper. It's uh it's 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 uh, really Damn. trying, really trying to uh, harness it. You know, letting letting God uh, yeah. lead, guide, and direct instead of me. Because <laughs> because in myself there is no good thing. You know, right. so. Uh, I, I can I can really uh, really lose my my temper, but oh, yeah. as long as I as long as I stay focused on Jesus, I do pretty good. That's <laughs> it right there. Hi Dale. Hi Teresa. Ain't until I take my eyes off of him, kind of like kind of like Peter in the water, right? And ain't ain't until he took his eyes off of him that he started to drop down in the water, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, up until then, he could walk on it, you know. And I I do pretty good with my temper as long as I keep my eyes on him. But man, as soon as I take my eyes off of him. I, I can lose my temper real quick, fast, and in a hurry. That old, that old flesh, worldly man, don't mind climbing up there every once in a while. You know? It's, so. I mean, it happens It happens to all of us. You know, we all just have to take back, you know, sit back and think, you know, how, how do we want to live our lives? How do we want people to treat us? And how do we want people to see us? That's right. I want people to see God in me. That's right. And I want people to respect me. I want to respect everybody. I, I don't try to tell people how to live their lives. I don't try to tell people how to believe. I tell right. them how I feel and what's going on with me. I've overcome cancer through the grace of God. Piggy's overcome surgery on his neck, uh, nerve damage. Could have been paralyzed from the I neck. I didn't overcome it. God did it. Well, that's what I was saying. Through God. We, we've come through all this. And I was supposed to be dead on the table, not move neck down if I survived. Yeah. I can still move. There and you go. Walk. You know, I, I have testimony of that because they told us he was going to be in rehab for a minimum of two weeks after his surgery. Minimum two weeks. That's 14 days. Five days after he went into rehab, he was coming home. There you go. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Because he could, he had done everything they uh, worked with him on. He was able to walk with the walker. He was able to take care of himself, bathe himself, do everything for himself, as long as he did within reason and with his walker. I had a few of them tell me, I wish all our patients were like you. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, you know, God gave me an opportunity a second, uh, another, yet another chance. I've been dead three times. And, you know, and he provided all this care for me. Didn't cost me anything. And, you know, the way to get better was to listen to them. Yeah, if I didn't listen to them, gave them a hard time, that'd be like spitting in God's face. Oh, I ain't gonna do that. Yeah. You got that right. Yeah, God God took care of both of us. I was in the hospital for nine days after my surgery. I had had to have a hysterectomy. Um, I don't mind talking about my cancer because what I went through, I know there's other ladies going through too. I had uh, female issues. Uh, I had I was diagnosed with endometrial uterine cancer, stage three C back in twenty thirteen. And uh <laughs> had to have complete hysterectomy. Um, and I told about they took out the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries. I had an 18 centimeter mass on my right ovary. 
that was benign. My right ovary was malignant. I was 19 of 28 centimeters in base with a tumor inside my uterus uh, that was malignant. Uh, they took out two uh, lymph, nodes. lymph nodes in my groin. The right one was, but you know, it was clear. Nothing wrong with it. The left one, they had uh, two of the three, uh, two of the five biopsies they did on it. it came back malignant, getting ready to go into my lymph system. Uh, That's why it was stage three, not stage four. Had it gone into her lymph system, it would have been game over. Yeah, and see, mm -hmm. I had just lost my aunt, my mom's baby sister, uh, had passed away from complications of cancer. She had three different masses, one in her throat, one in her side, one in her groin, all three different types of cancer. Uh, that was diagnosed in uh, September and October of 2012, and she died the Sunday after Thanksgiving of that year, 2012. And then here come June 2013, I was diagnosed. Well, I wasn't diagnosed with cancer, but they found the mass. And then August, after I had the, when I had my surgery, they found out that I had cancer. And so I was in the hospital for nine days after my surgery because I mean, they cut me. I have a scar like that right there going down my abdomen. Doc and came in to talk to her about what he could and could not take out. And she, he started that and she just looked at him and said, Doc, if you think it needs to come out, take it. Yeah. And he took out, like I said, all that plus my omentum, which is the layer of fat uh, over your stomach area and everything. Took that out. Uh, took out my appendix. I'd already had my gallbladder taken out years ago, but if it could come out and it was unnecessary to them, it came out. But uh, I've had uh, 28 days of radiation, went through a total of six rounds of chemotherapy. I went through three rounds uh, before my radiation. Took my the radiation. hard stuff, too. Yeah, I, I, they gave me one radiation treatment. 21 days later, I got another, not radiation, but chemo treatment. Then 21 day, days later, I got another chemo treatment. 21 days later, I got another chemo treatment. And then I started my radiation. And then a month later, I went back and had this, another three on the chemo. And I was declared cancer-free in March of 2014. But uh, it's all through the grace of God. It's I like kept my tied up. I kept my weight <laughs> up. I lost my hair. I was bald. I didn't care. I mean, I rocked it. You know, it, it, it'd be people in there looking at her just like, how? Yeah. I, and I, one day, Carol, one of the main nurses we dealt with, yeah. asked her, how? how? How did I keep upbeat? And I thought, it was God. I right. said, you know, it's all, all because of God that I was able to keep my appetite, that I was able to have a good attitude. And that's the whole thing. If you're going through something like that, whether it's the surgery like Piggy went through, whether it's something I went through, what anybody goes through in life, keep a good attitude. That's right. Praise God for the good. Praise God for the bad. That's right. Especially in the bad. Especially yeah. in the bad. You know, I, I have to say, I, I, I am so blessed to know that, um, you know, I went through that. And I've told people, you know, even before I went through my surgery, you know, when my mom passed away in 2010, I was well over 300 pounds. I lost a hundred pounds from 2011 until 2012. I had cut back on everything I ate, did not drink any sodas. All I drank, the only thing I would drink would be water, milk, or juice, and mostly water. But I lost a hundred pounds. And then in 2012, I was able to go back to work. I hadn't worked for years because I was taking care of my mom. And I went back to work and, uh, then I started having female issues and went through, was working, taking care of all that. And then that, and then uh, met Piggy, September, 2012, met him online, August, 2012. We met through a, 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 a online site. It was a, a meetme.com or something like that. We met and became friends, met him in person in September. And I had a profile picture of a helicopter on there and we, she loves helicopters. So love we helicopters. started talking and uh, you know, and then we got together in February, uh, we started living together in April, and it wasn't long after, it was in June that I had a pain in my side, and I thought, well, you know, I pulled a muscle, but it woke me, I, I, I mean, I was in tears, but he made me go to the emergency room, that's when they found the mass, and, and God had a plan for all of that. Yeah, the doctor that talked to her about it, she said, I could do the surgery, but I feel like there's more going on than I can handle. That his lady doctor and uh, that, that doctor earned my utmost respect at that very moment yeah and that's dr woods uh out of dalton she it was amazing and then she asked me if i wanted to be uh, referred to chattanooga or 
Atlanta. And I said Chattanooga because it's closer. Mm -hmm. And she referred me to uh, the tumor clinic in, in, in Chattanooga. And I saw Dr. De Pasquale and Dr. Bourne. And Dr. De Pasquale was my surgeon. And he is the absolute best. He is a uh, kind, of, kind of a funny thing. He's an oncologist. Yeah. Uh, she went for a checkup and everything and, and asked about a certain part of life. And I said, oh, yeah, just fine. And, and I looked at Carol and I told her, I said, if I didn't know better, I'd swear Dr. D took out a tape and took measurements to make sure. <laughs> I said, perfect. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, Dr. D was great. Dr. Dr. Bourne was great. Dr. Dr. Kimsey, who was my radiological oncologist, and you know, wonderful. And but I give praise to God for putting me with the right doctors at the right time to get things taken care of. I praise God for all things in my life because without him I'd be nothing. That's right. And her faith was built up on that because she was first a bit worried about it and then a woman told her something. She told her said think of it this way. If you beat it, you get to spend the rest of your life with me. If you don't beat it, you get to spend the rest of eternity with the Lord. That's right. Tell me she said you're in a win win situation. So don't ever think that you're losing anything. You're in a win-win situation. And, and from there, my faith yeah. is a type of, I don't just believe. I know. Yeah. I've seen things, I've been shown things, I've been called up, I've been shown visions, dreams, uh, just a lot of things. And God has shown me a lot of things. Yeah, I, I, I have it in me that I cannot deny God because I have seen the things of God. But her faith after that woman told her that was such like I've never seen except for maybe one person and that was my Aunt Mary. And my Aunt Mary was the type of person that she was so filled with the Holy Ghost you could be 30, 40 feet away and you could feel it rolling off of her in waves. Right. That was the kind of faith I say grow in her yeah it it the lady that told me that was a friend of my mom's from when i was a kid she used to be my, my grandmother's hairdresser and uh, the fact that you know she told me that it, it really made a change in my life so i try to share that knowledge with everybody if you're going through something bad in life and if you're sick or ha going through cancer especially you know if, if you have faith in jesus christ your lord and savior you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you're in a win-win situation in life because no matter what you're going through, you're either going to beat it or you're not. And if you don't beat it and you do have that faith, you do have the belief and knowledge that you are a Christian, that you have Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going to spend eternity with him. You get to walk through that door and begin life. Yeah. Yep. And if you overcome what you're going through, then you have the knowledge that you've won that battle and you get to live your life. So, uh, you know, I, I give that knowledge out to everybody and I freely share that because that was freely shared with me, you know, knowing that. And so, you know, I, I just ha I have for some reason, I have to share that. I don't know why that was like part, my heart to part share. of your testimony. Yeah. That's why. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's why I, one of my things is I tell folks, you know, I go with God. I don't go to a place to search for God. I take God with me. God is That's always. Right. Because he is everywhere. That's right. Like, literally everywhere. He yep. is he is literally everything. Yeah. Yep. So I take God with me. You know, if, if something's got me especially perplexed, uh, I'll, I'll speak out. I say I go with God in Jesus' name. That's right. Even as my knees might be buckling, I go with God in Jesus' name. And things turn out good. That's right. So I've seen I've seen a lot of good things, you know, that uh, that uh, can't be explained but one way. And that is that is Jesus, you know. So uh, there ain't nothing else that explains it. Her know, final so. her final night in the hospital. Unbeknownst to me, she had been praying. And since she'd been without food for 11 days, uh, that was a fast. Oh, yeah. And 
that night while she was in her mind, I'd laid my hand on the wall in there and prayed as well, you know, and asked God to heal her because it, it was questionable. Right. Well, she'd seen something that night, and the next day, medical staff was going nuts. Nine floors of hospital all but totally emptied out. People that weren't meant to go home for weeks were going home just fine. God had showed up, showed out. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What Pinkies I'm telling you is that while I was in that state, um, I was kind of in an in-between state. Like I said, I hadn't had anything to eat solid food for 11 days because uh, I had a problem with my ileus after the surgery. And so I couldn't eat anything without getting sick. And they had to give me softeners and stuff to open everything up. And a tube down her nose. And, and an NG tube. And uh, But that Thursday night, I was laying there, and there was a darkness. You could see it. I mean, when I talk about darkness, I'm not talking about anything you can see through. I'm talking about complete black. No, you can see nothing through it. it. And it was just all the way into the hallways, going into the doorways, and it was coming into my room. And I knew it was death. I, I knew what it was. I knew it, 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 it was the dark one coming. And I don't mean just one of the, one of his minions. I mean, it was the dark one coming because it, it, it was coming for me. I'd seen it before. And I was praying to, you know, it, it just, you know, Jesus help me. That was all I could do. Jesus help me. And this beautiful crystalline blue light. I mean, it, it was the purest blue light, blue light that you could imagine started shining back behind my head. And that light pushed that darkness out of my room, down the hallway, and out of the hospital. When it pushed it down the hallway, it pushed it down every hallway in that hospital and out of that hospital. And I didn't know that Piggy had been praying. He didn't know what was going on with me. But I knew I had not eaten anything for 11 days. And about maybe an hour after that, you know, I was awake the first time since basically my surgery that I had been with it enough to do anything and, and be compre you know, comprehensive enough to actually focus on anything and be awake. And he had gone to get him something to eat. And this was before we knew he was allergic to chocolate and he had a brownie and he had some lemonade that he got. Walnut brownie. It was the stalest brownie I have ever had in my life, but I ate half of that brownie. And well, I, here's the thing. I came in with it and, and a lemonade drink and she looked at me, she goes, that brownie? Huh. Yeah. She put her finger to it, rubbed on it. Mm, that... <laughs> well, half of his brownie and, and drinking half of his lemonade. I was happy. Yeah. And I kept it down because I've been, you know, any time else I tried to eat or drink anything, it made me sick. So I couldn't keep any more some of it. I let the doctor know the next morning that, you know, I had ate that and it stayed on my stomach, didn't lose it. And the doctor, Dr. Boren is the one that told me, he said, all right, so I'm going to take your NG tube out. He said, I'm going to order you breakfast. Eat all your breakfast, or what you can of it. He said, if you keep it down, we'll order you lunch. And if you keep your lunch down, you can go home this afternoon. I ate what I could. I all my breakfast because I was starving. And then I ate about half my lunch because they had the nastiest. It, it's almost like hamburger helper lasagna. But it was cardboardy, like it just nasty tasting. Even he wouldn't eat it. Kathy, and uh, these two stories are just one of many examples. You, you, let's just say it. Both of us are, are yeah. every day of our lives are miracles. Yeah, but um, I, I ate what I could and kept it down on my lunch. And um, Dr. Gonzalez, who was the resident that worked with Dr. Bourne and Dr. Uh, Pasquale, uh, he came in and he told me that I could go home. And he said, I don't know what time to get out because that's when we found out that everybody was going home from the hospital that day. He said, we're going to have to get you in queue because he said, everybody's going home. We don't know what's going on. And it was because God showed up and showed out. And, uh, you know, that, that was just to me... I came home finally that afternoon and uh, it, it's been 
a wild ride ever since. But yeah, you know, it, it's my life, and I don't mind sharing what I went through. I really don't because uh, hopefully something I go through or have gone through can help somebody else. That's right. And what they're going through. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what it's all about. It's about sharing, mm-hmm. sharing, and letting you know, letting others know that if he did it for you, he can do it for them. Oh yeah. And see, until this happened. I would always talk about my mom's testimony or my aunt's testimony. I, my mom had, uh, let me count the sisters. She's got, it's, it's my mom, uh, her sister. My mom had four sisters. One died as an infant. She had an older brother. And then she had two half brothers uh, from her dad's side. But it was my mom's second. It was the one, one that was born two after her. Uh, I tell about her testimony and I told about my mom's testimony and everything she went through. But it was, it was never my testimony that I can share until this happened with me. And when this happened with me, I could give my testimony. That's right. But, uh, yeah. If I was to give my mom's testimony, my mom, she had was diagnosed with COPD in her 40s. She actually died from stage two COPD. And uh, she had uh, a 100% blockage of the main artery going to her heart and she had two corollary arteries in the back of her heart that took the place of that main artery and they were 80% functioning. God did that for her. She went for prayer at church one night because she was having problems and um, she had gone to a heart doctor and they told her that she had a 100% blockage and needed to have that taken care of. And then they got to doing a scan on her heart and found out she had the two corollary arteries and they were afraid to try to open up the front artery because it could collapse the back too. And they said, we're not going to touch it. You know, you're doing good the way you are. She had that. She had high hernia. She was diabetic. You know, she had high blood pressure, high cholesterol. But her thing in life was not why me. She never, I, I never heard my mama say why me with everything she'd been through in life. From the time she was a kid and everything she went through with her brothers and sisters all the way up, she never said by me. It was always, why not me? I'm not any better than anybody else. And so I try to live my life that way too. Why not me? You know, I'm not any better than anybody else to have to go through anything. Right. And it's, um, I I learned that from her. And then, like I said, her sister, that I would tell her testimony, my aunt, my Lolo, I love her dearly. Um, She had heart attack. And had to have bypasses. I'm, I'm not sure how many bypass it was, but uh, she wound up having a blood clot going from her hip all the way down to her ankle in her right leg. And they had to work that blood clot out and get it out, take care of it. She wound up with a trach tube, had that trach for one or two years before it was removed. And she could breathe. Uh, one of the episodes she had where she, her heart had stopped, she went up in the emergency room. She was dead on the opera, on the ER table in the ER. For 211 minutes, her doctor, her heart doctor, would not stop working on her. Everybody, all the nurses and everybody was ready to call, but they worked on her for 211 minutes. Teresa says she's losing connection. Uh, um, and during that time, you know, she can tell you where she was during that time. She said, I was talking to mama. So we were sitting in rockers out in the field and I was watching her husband, Michael Melvin. She said, I was watching melvin and andrew which was her grandson playing out in the field while she was talking to my grandmother and she said i remember that clearly I said i was talking to mama but mama told me it wasn't my time that i'd have to go back soon and she came back and she's still with us today and for somebody you know she had one child and that's her daughter and never thought to have grandkids because her daughter didn't want any kids well her daughter wound up in her second marriage, married a man and had three kids. And then they had Andrew. Andrew passed away the day after he was born. And that was going to be her only biological child. Her husband was set to have a vasectomy the day the baby died. And he obviously didn't have the vasectomy because they were at the hospital. Went on to have two more children, two boys. So now... My aunt is the grandmother to not three step grandchildren. Those are her grandkids and not four because she had one. She has a total of six grandkids. She has 11 great grandchildren. 
And this is from a woman who never thought to have grandkids at all because her, like I said, her daughter wasn't interested in having kids at the time when she was younger who has uh, nearly died multiple times, who's been through all that she's been through. So she's got a testimony of her own that's even, you know, amazing in, in itself. Um, the youngest sister, the one that passed away from cancer, you know, she had her own testimony of she was lying dead in their living room floor. And my uncle, because her heart had stopped, my uncle was praying over and doing everything to kid. And, you know, God brought her back. You know, each of us have our own stories and our own testimonies. But, you know, I, th these were the testimonies I was given because these are the miracles I've seen in my life up until I became a miracle of my own. That got through God's grace. So I share it all. And I can't anybody tell me that God don't exist. Jesus don't exist. That the power of prayer doesn't work because believe me, the prayer of prayer does work. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't realize it's about prayer. And. I'm not trying to sound ugly or be ugly, and I hope everybody understands this. When we pray, if you are not a Christian, if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you're praying to Jesus, they're not going to hear your prayer. They'll hear, but they will not hear your prayers because. That's right. That's the truth. Have, you have to have a relationship to be heard. That is Repent the and accept Jesus, Jesus as Christ. your Lord and Savior. That That's right. the prayer from you they're going to hear and accept is. The, the, the sinner's prayer, the prayer, That's right. the prayer of repentance. And then your prayers will be heard. And that, that's what gets me. You know, so many people don't understand it because it's not taught anymore in church. It, that used to be what I was hearing in church. And well, it's, it's kind of like this. You know, if you become a child of God, you're in that family. You're adopted into that family. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't live in another's house and expect to get the rewards of a better house. There you go. Yeah. You know, so, Dale, I sent you a message via Nana. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, yeah. if you uh, watched my live from this past Sunday night, uh, I had Dale from Nine Acre Family Farm yeah. up there with me. That was a miracle of itself that happened that night. We had church that night. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, some things uh, happened that Dale can explain. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, that, that you'll understand from that live. Yeah, uh, I was just jaw jacking, and they would come into my live, and I knew it was there. I didn't know if he was going to come into my live or not because we had heard that he had some issues with YouTube going on. And uh, when he came into my live, and I did something I wasn't never going to do, and but. I felt that this had to be. Mm -hmm. And that night became not about Dell or myself. It became about God. Yeah. There you go. And uh, you just have to watch it. Yeah. It, he comes in about an hour into my live and then we go for a while. And, yeah. And, uh, but uh, it, it, somebody, somebody, I, I told somebody I talked to on Facebook, you know, she needed to go watch that because she was asking me some questions about some stuff. She needed to go watch that. And Dale can tell you because I copied and pasted it to his wife so that she could let him see it uh, and everything. It was very positive. God did some major things that night. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was truly amazing. Like I said, we had church that night. and it, You could feel the Holy Spirit maybe. And, it, and I've I, I was so blessed to be a part of that. And and I know we've gotten a lot off the subject, but yeah, I just feel like I need to share all this. And it, 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 it was a wonderful thing. And knowing that Dale was not going to be able to go live that night because of what was going on and the fact that he was able to come on to Piggy's platform and share that word. That's yeah, I, mean. I, I like to watch Dale's devotional every Sunday night because he'll, he'll come on a little while after I get off of here. And I don't like to miss his devotionals. Yeah. He's a foundation builder. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so I thought, well, you know, he was in the live, he was in the chat. I'm, well, I'm just going to get him up here, let him ex explain it, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't fully understand what was going on myself and uh, everything. 
That's right, Dale. That's how we're supposed to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I got him up there. Mm -hmm. And boy, howdy. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it was awesome. Yeah. And I noticed the next night, his wife does the thing with three other ladies. They call, they call themselves the Four Sisters. And they do a Bible study and uh, everything. And I noticed that Nana was able to go live on Dale's channel for that. Yeah. So I know something must have happened yeah. to make that happen. You know, uh, just miracle after miracle. I, I, I told Piggy, I said, what happened with Dale's channel that night was, it was of God because there was a reason Dale was on Piggy's platform that Sunday night. And there, because there was some somebody that had to be touched that might not have been touched otherwise. That's right. right. And so God had a plan. And they yeah, always I, does. I'm sorry you had to go through what you went through, but I thank God that I, you did. I, I'm thankful it happened. Yeah, I, I'm thank I thank God that what happened happened because you were able to go go live with Piggy, and the word. It, it, it was amazing. God showed up. God showed out again. You know, like I, said, I was going to get me some Dale devotional one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, it, it's what I know about Dale. That's why I like him. And I've told him this. He knows it. I can tell he's legit. I can tell that that is a heart given over to God to let God do with as he sees fit. He is right. a vessel of what God wants out there. And, uh, you know, and like I said, he's a foundation builder. Yeah. And he, he's good at building a good foundation. Yeah. So he was, he was made to realize some things that night. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got to have them. You got to have people who can lay the foundation, you know, and, uh, and then you got to have people that can build on it. Yeah. You know? So uh, I know I know a lot of times, uh, you know, when I when I'll get to preaching uh, or, or even teaching at the church, you know, uh, sometimes people are like, hey, uh, you, you, you were way up here and the rest of us was way down here. And sometimes well, I have sometimes I have to remember I got to I got to speak to everybody all at one time. You know, so well, there's something about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a little bit of knowledge, biblically. Uh, God shows me things and teaches me things. You know, Dale sees me as someone who has that knowledge, but I got him to understand that all that knowledge means nothing if you don't have a good foundation. That's right. You know, so what he does is extremely important. Because he is a good builder of that foundation. Yep. And you, gotta have, you gotta have the milk and to work yourself to the meat, you know? And and that foundation is just going from milk to meat, you know, and layer and layer and layer, you know. And then somebody else comes through and lays down whatever they're gonna lay down. And uh and, and it builds builds up a, a an awesome house. That's it. And Dale, just so you know. It's not that I'm building you up. I'm building God up because he built you. He created you. He made you what you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what he made Dale. Is a good foundation builder. Mm -hmm. That's right. The rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. That's it. Right. So. Uh, but yeah, I it's We've kind of covered everything tonight, haven't we? I believe we have. I think we've had a pretty good time here. I do believe. I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Enjoying. That's so I, I like I like uh, I like whenever you know I get to spend time with other Christian people. You know, it, it don't happen all the time. You know, right. you don't always get to talk about God on here, and I like it when I do get to talk about Him. Oh yeah. So, that, that's my favorite topic. We, we can forget all the giant pumpkins. We can forget all that stuff. You want to talk about Jesus, buddy? I'm all about that. Yeah. Right. So homesteading and all that other stuff, that can just go all fade back because I you we'll talk about Jesus all day. 
Yeah. That's right, Dale. He did. And that's that's one of Dale's favorite right there. And it's a good one. He knit us in our mother's womb for a time such as this. Yes, he did. He knew us in our mother's womb, knew our name. He knew us we from before we were right. in the womb. Mm -hmm. Thank God right. that. Yeah. That's right. So. Oh, yeah. So before we go, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Is there anything we, we might not have touched on that y'all wanted to mention? I don't think so. Uh, I will say anybody that's interested, I do have videos that come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays and Fridays are my recipe videos. Wednesdays is my What's Up Wednesday. It can be anything from mail calls to uh, taste testing to something new to just whatever. But it, it will pretty much revolve around food. It might even be a uh, uh, a review of some something that I bought. Uh, Saturday nights, I go live from 7 to 9, usually 7 to 8, 38, 45, because I try to get off a little bit early because I know there's some other channels that do go live at 9, and I like to let room for people to go into theirs. Uh, we do food trivia, all types of food trivia on uh, Saturday night. Piggy goes live on Sundays on Piggy's Piddles. It's called the Piggy Way, uh, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and he usually goes until about 645, 650. He likes to get out a little early so he can get into Dale's devotional and yep. be set up and ready to go. Um, but other than that, you know, we that that's pretty much what we do. We do our videos, we go into live streams, we support other channels. Um, you know, I told you I have Piggy's the rub for anybody that's interested. You can contact me on it. The cookbooks anybody's interested in. I also have the backbite. My, my little stuff comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, Piggy comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays and live stream on Sunday. He's hoping to eventually go every day of the week. He wants to do Bible study three days a week and then videos three days a week. So um, he's working to that. He's trying to learn about the editing and getting everything uploaded to uh, YouTube and everything. Right. So he's working on that right now. And once he gets all that down pat, then he'll go to the... Uh, doing three, three. doing more doing more right but, uh, but yeah and you know if anybody wants to talk if you have a problem want to talk um many can tell you uh i don't know how many of you here y'all in here know linda peterson um you know and several others they contact Piggy. you know if you're friends with me or piggy on facebook um if you don't know piggy's name you can contact you know you can become a friend of mine on facebook you'll find piggy because we're you know on there together basically i You'll find him for me. And Piggy's one of these that he will sit and talk with you. You know, he'll FaceTime with you. If you have a problem, he'll talk with you. That's his column. He, he encourages people. He talks with people. And, um, you know, I, I'm not saying he does it all the time, but I, I've seen him sit and talk for six hours to somebody that needed the encouragement, needed to talk. And uh, he did that even before we got on YouTube. He would... Uh, sit and he would chat with people and talk with people and we had some that would call us on our home phone and uh, just just so that they could have somebody to talk to and he, did, he especially did, did it for vets at before we got on youtube mm -hmm. and uh, you know we are all about it and yeah I, I do want to shout out a couple of channels real quick if you don't mind uh, joy stewart that, that is the name of the channel joy stewart and her husband scott swift uh -huh. scott is a marine he is uh, going through cancer right now. And uh, they diagnosed him with six months left a year ago. Yeah, over a year ago now. It's been a year yeah. and a half. Um, you know, so he, th they have a thing out called hashtag not today. Um, they don't do it as much now because Scott has met the year mark. You know, he, he has gone from being ambulatory to walking on a walker to now he's in a wheelchair. He is determined he's going to get back to the walker and be walking again. Um, he did not have surgery. He still has the cancer. He, they are treating it. Um, they, they told him it'd be hit or miss either way. So yeah. he opted for, well, I just, whatever comes, comes. Yeah. He, he's, he's living his day each day as it comes. So, you know, if y'all could just, uh, you know, they, they are neither one of them monetized, but if you could uh, check out their channels, just show them some love. Say, hi, hey, you know, we're here to support and show love. Um, yeah, they're big about the red shirt Friday. Yes. Red Shirt Friday is a big thing for Miss Joy and Mr. Scott. Remember, everyone deployed until they all come home. 
uh, they he used to do a live stream every Friday about Red Shirt Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so and that's where I actually got my trivia thing from. Was Mr. Scott did basic tri- uh, and general trivia every Tuesday, right? Uh, until he got to where he couldn't do lives, and he's trying to get back to doing some lives again. But those two, I especially want to shout out. Um, Avid Fisherman, if anybody uh, doesn't have Avid, please check out Avid. Avid does cooking as well. He he fishes, he cooks, he does live streams on Sunday evenings at sometimes eight o'clock, sometimes nine o'clock. He does Bible trivia. Um, they do Bible study on his channel on Sunday nights. Uh, on some of them, so you know it. It's channels that we know, and Avid is a good friend of ours. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other channels. Um, my mind is, you know, actually going blank on a lot. But uh, of course, uh, Johnny and Christine at Gillum Farm and Christine and Mrs. Gillum Farm, love them. Uh, Pooch and Pretty at Full Blown Country and No Judgment Here with Tish Ross. Full Blown Country is Pooch. No Judgment Here with Tish Ross. The podcast. Podcast. Yeah. Is Tish. his wife's Tish's channel. Yeah. And, you know, I, there, there's, there's tons of, them. I couldn't name them all. There's so many wonderful channels out there, y'all. And I, I tell you, the best way I have found to find some awesome channels, and that is to go to the collaborations. Yep. You go to the collaborations, and I guarantee you will find some amazing channels. I found so many through the collaborations that I've done. And I started following, you know, a lot of them. Or videos of the meetups because. Yeah. Uh, that's how Johnny and Christine came to my attention because they had noticed they they had their channels, but they didn't know anything about the communities we were in. Right. And Christine had heard about this meetup and everything, so they showed up. I've loved them ever since I saw them on that first video. Oh yeah, they're they're fantastic yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another channel, Real and Virtual Outdoors. That's Troy. Uh, again, uh, Troy is into hunting, fishing, and gaming. Um, he does. Uh, Troy amazes me. He he does simulator games. He does uh, Call of the Wild, uh, where he uh, goes hunting. He does Call of the Wild ang- Angler, Call of the Wild, which is the fishing game. He does truck simulations where he drives the big rigs here in the U.S. and in the European big rigs. Uh, He's got one now. It's a farm simulator where he's driving tractors. Uh, it's just all sorts of stuff. I, I love his sense Rest. of humor. And the thing, uh, Troy, what amazes me is that uh don't know what happened in his life put him in a wheelchair. But he didn't give up. Yeah, he, he's got a wonderful, wonderful yeah. outlook on life. He, he, he's got a sense of humor. You, you, he'll give you as good as you want to give him. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's know. hilarious. I love uh, him. Yeah, and he has fun with it when he's doing it. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't let it get him down. Yeah. Uh, he didn't let it stop him. He's still doing the things that he enjoys, albeit virtually, mm-hmm. but he's still doing things that he enjoys. That's it. And, you know, he, he's not sad or down about it. He's he's, de- he's he's far from being depressed about it. He, he doesn't let it stop him. And his mm-hmm. sense of humor is wonderful. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll make you laugh. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, another channel, uh, he hasn't been on for a while, and he might be, not be everybody's cup of tea, and that's Mike's Fishing Home. Mike, um, we mentioned him earlier. I, uh, he, he does uh, mainly live streams. I know he does do some fishing videos and some fishing lives. Uh, he, he cooks. Now, I will say, you know, that um, there is a language thing for those who don't particularly like certain types of language but that's just who he is that, that's who he is and he does you know he he does drink but that's his business i don't judge him for that he is who he is he's he is an awesome friend to me and piggy and uh, that's, that's like Aaron, and one of the reasons they yeah. like us we don't judge them for what they do that's their right. choice that's their life yeah and that's up in the Aaron outdoors he he's great Aaron. uh he does live streams because he also does fishing videos he, he likes the 420 yeah but uh, you know, you know but like I said, I don't judge anybody for what they do. What how they live their life is between that, them and God. All I can do is just give my that, that goes back to the you treat me like a decent human being, I'll treat you the same. Yeah. That's right. And um, yeah, so you know, some channels might not be to everybody's taste, but you know, you might find some really wonderful channels in their live streams because yeah. that's how I've met a lot of wonderful Cause, people. Because it's, it's it's not my job, and I ain't here to judge anyone. 
if it goes biblical, I'll tell folks what's biblical, but how they choose to live their life is between them and God, not me and them. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, Mike and Aaron both know about Pinky and I, you know, we don't judge anybody. We will tell you how we feel, how we believe. And Mike was first to tell us, you know, he said, you know, you don't have to be, uh, on the same wavelength as far as like politically and things like that. And he'll, he'll, he's first to tell you, know, he, he's a liberal, but I don't think he is. I think Mike's moderate, you know, that's just me. Um, but we accept Mike for who he is. He accepts us for who we are. And we meet on the things we can agree on. If there, you know, and that, that's where it goes right there. We meet on where we can, what we can agree on. Well, so, on that one is what I told them was, you know, we all basically want the same things. We just have different views on how to get there. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, so I, like I, said, I just wanted to shout these channels out. Um, I, I always love to do that because they are always shouting me out and they're always shouting out, you know, the piggies, the rub and things like that and the cookbooks for me. And if they're going to be so kind as to promote me and mine, then I want to be able to share them out with others because you never know. They might have something on their show, on their channel that others might like. That's there right. might be people out here that like fishing. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say that it, one channel is better than the other. These are all channels that I like. Um, like I said, when we first got started into the YouTube, I, I was all over the place. I was in all sorts of different live streams, checking out different channels. And the fishing, and nothing against the homestead community because we love the homestead community, don't get me wrong. But the fishing community took us in and made us a part of them yep. and accepted us, you know, as, as is. As is. And, you know, and, and as we grew and got into it and got into it with more of the homestead community, yeah, they, the homestead community's done the same thing for us because I don't particularly fall into any niche except for the cooking niche. You know, I said, when it comes to fish, you know, if it's not in my pan, I don't fool with it, you know, because I, I, I like eating fish. I don't like catching fish. That's how I go fishing is out of her pan. Yeah. And <laughs> it's to homesteading. Well, you know, we haven't been able to do that yet. So maybe one of these days we'll be part of that. But my thing is the cooking and everybody likes to eat. I don't care if you're a homesteader, if you're a fisherman, if you're a gamer, if you're, you know, live here, live there, whatever. Everybody likes to eat. That's so right. I, I everybody. Consider, everybody likes to eat good. I, yeah, I, I consider myself a part of the whole YouTube community. There you so, go. Right. But, but that's that's what I wanted to do is just you know give out give a little shout out to everybody and just like and and definitely say thank you for inviting us to be here with you. Absolutely, and, absolutely, and thank you guys for coming on. I've enjoyed it. I've had a oh, good time. I, I, I have truly enjoyed it. I, and I looked at the time and I was like, where is the time gone? Because it normally, TikTok. well, you know, when I have fun, it, it amazes me how fast the time flies. Right. But if I'm not having a good time, it's like I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, God, it's dragging, it's dragging. But yep. it's just like, all right, it's almost 11 o'clock. Really? Right. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yep. It's, it, it's went by very, very quickly today. So yes. it, it's been a good time. I'd like to have you guys on again sometime. Yeah, right. Just hit me up. You've got my email on that. And don't forget, send me your. Uh, mailing address. So I yes, ma'am. I'll do that right after we get out of here. I'm okay, now it will probably be to... next week before I get it mailed out because I've got to get my bottle. Well, it'll be when I get my bottles in. I'll let you know when I get my bottles in from Amazon. Just hey, okay, you, know. you got something to talk. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I just have to get those bottles coming. But yeah, it. it I, I, I like sharing that stuff out, especially the the barbecue sauce and the and the rub, and uh, getting other people's inputs on it, and. I, 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 I just hope everybody enjoys it that gets it because uh, it seems like everybody does in here because oh, yeah, everybody every that's got it in the in the in the in the comment section here was raving about it. Yeah, I, I, I sent out quite a bit of it uh, a little over a year or so ago when I first started doing that. And it was like, oh, wow. You know, and I, I, I send if people are doing giveaways, I send it out or I, I volunteer some of it for giveaways when I know about them and part of them or whatever. And uh, to me, that gets the product out there. And if anybody really wants to try it after that, you know, they can contact me and I try right. to get the information. So, but uh, yeah, I, I, that's one thing I do. I, I will volunteer. The, uh, now the rub is what I volunteer for the giveaways. The piggies, the rub. 
Um, but I have my own giveaways, uh, which I have had one since I hit my thousand subscriber mark. I, I, Piggy and I talked about it. When I hit 2,500 subscriber, I will do another giveaway. And at that time, I will give away one each of my cookbooks. Oh, that's going to be good. With. Yeah. Uh, and the last time I had a giveaway, I gave away a cookbook. Actually, I gave away two cookbooks. Um, I gave away the wireless bound and the soft, uh, southbound, uh, one of each of them. I'm and getting ready to start a giveaway, <laughs> trying to push me to 3,000. So uh, let me see. I ain't checked it for this week. Let me see where we're at right now. <sighs> I am at uh, 2683. So 2683. And if I want to do a giveaway at 3000 for some grow lights oh, wow. so, and give away some grow lights. So you guys are the first ones to hear about it. Oh, cool. Well, I'm setting it. Well, when I looked before we went live, I was setting at 1972. So I am 528 away from my next giveaway, which it might be next year for my next giveaway. But if it's next year, then I'll have three cookbooks to give away. <laughs> Let me tell you, it seems like once you hit 2000, that it kind of picks up. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I, I've been told that once you hit, I think it's somewhere between 24 and 27, it'll slow for a, a bit. And then once you hit 28, it's like you're over that 300, that 3000 mark in no time. Right. And then I heard once you hit 5k, that it's like jumps to 10K pretty quick. And then from 10K, it kind of explodes yeah. pretty fast. So we'll see. I, I'm almost at 10,000 on TikTok. So, cool. yeah, I've got like 9,000 uh, something. I can't remember. 9,000 and something. So, I, I, I think I may have about 170 or 180 something on, on TikTok. <laughs> I don't put up a lot of content. I just don't. Now, now if they just come on over to you, you do. Yeah. I wish they would. I try to encourage them, but they don't do it. Maybe I should get you to go over and encourage them too, Piggy. Yeah, I, I don't promote my channel much on TikTok. What I do on TikTok is I just do you know the little video things I got on there. That, that's just my fun time away from YouTube. Right. I, I, I tell you what, I'll uh, look for you on there uh, and everything, and I'll hit you up. I'll have to get your information on that, but I'll hit you up and I'll let you come to mind and see what I do on there. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Piggy's is hilarious. He, he, he is. But uh, yeah, we do. We thank you so much. And anytime you want us on there, just let us know and we'll, we'll make it work. Normally we're available anytime except for Saturday nights and Sunday nights. Those are about the only two nights we're not available. Um, but uh, during the daytime, as long as it's after five o'clock in the afternoon, we're, we're doing good because we usually get home a little after five in the afternoon when we're as long as we're still doing that. Yeah. Now if his, if it comes to the point, we're not taking his aunt to daycare or anything like that. They, they stop doing that. Then uh, my whole schedule going to go back to change because this old girl, she is a night owl. I function best between the hours of 5 PM and 4 AM. <laughs> I, I, I do. I am wide awake. I'm ready to go. I can get things done between those hours that I cannot get done through the daytime because I, I've always been a night owl pretty much all my life. Yep. And um, I, I just, I, those are my hours to function. I, I'll, dra I'll drag until about five in the afternoon or whatever. And then once five or six o'clock in the afternoon comes by until about four or five o'clock in the morning. And then I'm ready to go to bed, do my thing. But yeah, I, I'm a big night owl, but both me. Other. yeah. And being a Marine, I've had to learn to adapt, adjust, and overcome. Yep. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, but, uh, guys, it's been, it's been a really good place to be here tonight, and I really appreciate y'all coming on. So um, let, me, uh, let me go over who all we got coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks here real fast. Uh, da, 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 live streams. Here we go. All right. So uh, this Tuesday, April 9th, we have Marco from Agro Thrive going to be on with us. April 16th, we've got Travis Ginger and Randall from Extreme Gardening coming on. April 23rd, we got Jim Ford coming on. Uh, April 30th, we've got Chad New from Colorado Giants. Uh, May 8th, uh, which is a Wednesday, we got Tony from Kettle Kitchen coming on. That Tuesday, I'll be on his channel. Uh, May 14th, we got Christine from Gillum Farms. 
Uh, May 21st, we've got Brad Bledsoe, uh, which is a, another giant grower. Uh, May 28th, we've got Enoch Graham, the urban gardener. June 4th, we've got Zach Hatton from Hatton's Homestead. June 11th, we've got Nick Kennedy, which is another giant grower. Uh, June 18th, we've got Adam Weber, another giant grower. June 25th, we've got Jesus Loving Homestead. July 2nd, we got Milk and Honey Homestead. July 9th, we've got Flourish, uh, Florida Farm. July 16th, we've got Michelle from Big Valley Living. Um, July 23rd, we've got uh, Where to Begin Homestead. July 30th, we've got Emmett Andrews, which is another giant grower. August 6th, we've got Destin uh, Noak from Texas Garden Guy. Uh, and uh, then September 17th, we've got Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farms. Uh, from August 13th all the way through December 31st, excluding uh, what I just said about 17, September 17th, all those dates are open. So, uh, guys, if you want to join us on a live stream, you can email me at babydrill2119 at yahoo.com. And in the uh, subject, put down uh, you know live stream and uh, we'll, we'll get you set up with a date here and uh, get you on. I want to I want to try to finish this out, get this filled so that I can start working on my 2025. Because I want to have 2025 done before 25 gets here. That way I can just keep cranking out the lives and not have to worry about anything, right? It, it's so much better to have it pre-planned than to try to scramble and, and figure it out. So uh, I love being ahead of the. I love being ahead of the chat, or excuse me, ahead of the game. But guys, thank you so much in the chat. Thank you so much, Janet Humphreys, for coming in here and being a mod. And Tony from Kettle Kitchen for coming in and being a mod. I really appreciate you guys. Thank all of you guys that are in the chat. You guys have been great tonight. And uh, we really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Piggy and Aileen, for being here tonight. And uh, guys, from uh, we're, we're going to see you guys next time right here in the hollers and hills of West Virginia. See you guys. <laughs>